And we're live. This is Julian Jean Pierre from the Royal St. Lucian Seamounts Company. And I think I have us uh, set up tonight to watch the video um, trying a new way of streaming. Um, I don't know Trying to do a new way of streaming and uh, kind of check and see if people can see me all right. So give me a few minutes, guys, to just get my system kind of all situated and set up properly so that I can show you guys some of the research that I've been doing or I've done over the what, past three years that I have been doing uh, St. Lucian CMOS company. Um, okay, uh, let's, let's get into it. Um, Actually, first, let me let me go to the chat here and put in a link. I want to make sure that anybody that wants to join me live, because you know I'm I'm running out of restream here, and uh, I can do a live. Uh, you guys can join me live. Well, it's not linking on YouTube for some reason. You can see that link, or just send me a message, and I'll and I'll try to invite you on this, and. Uh, I'm going to go in and uh, I'm going to get a drink first and then we'll uh, I'll, I'll launch in the video the videos, the different uh, research material that I have on um, EMOS and why I, I can sh like prove that uh, it's not possible for CMOS to get uh, minerals from a rock. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Did not mean to um, disappear like that. Let me make sure I'm streaming on my platforms before I start talking. You can see the link below here. If you're able to copy and paste that. Um, then you can um, join in on the conversation with me. Just check and see if anybody has any comments. All right, so I think it's about time I start uh, sharing my screen. Looks good, everything looks pretty cool. Okay, so. Screen and a window. System, yes. Yeah. 
this is one of the um, the links. So first, I'm gonna I'm gonna start in my sort of discussion. I'm gonna be talking about um, I'm gonna start from the basics, right? This is a simple basic article. Uh, it's written by a man named uh, Matthew from a company called uh, Detox and, uh, and Cure. What's up, CMOS Avenue? What's up, bro? Good to see you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I think you got to put your mic on or something. Maybe you're muted. Yeah, I can't hear you. I don't know if it's your phone or what the is, but uh, maybe you'll figure it out. In the meantime, I'm going to go and talk about this this article. You can Google it. It's called uh, Uncovering the Wildcrafted Myth. And um, it goes into the story of basically... Um, it's uh how do you put it it goes in and discusses uh everything that dr sabi had been talking about in a lot of the videos that he has you know and i recommend this is a great basis to start reading and understanding some of the differences or the debates or even why there is this stuff right um so, you know, it starts with the topic I've been wrestling with for years now, the true story behind Wildcraft and CMOS, how to share with you what I learned while not damaging the perception of those of you and I look up to, particularly in CMOS, is a tough game. But yeah, it is try, you know, I mean, you want to find the truth, but you don't want to, you know, shame or discredit anybody, and I get that, you know? Uh, the truth is that figuring out what it takes to grow CMOS isn't as straightforward as you may expect. It's taken a lot of people a, a long time and a lot of money to get this right. I would like to state this no way intended to defame anyone, simply to highlight that even the people you and I look up to sometimes get their facts wrong. And it is on to us to do our own research for our own health and well-being too. We also need to acknowledge that science never sleeps. Ergo, things as we know keep on changing and two has an impact and that's true you know stuff that we learn today could be changed tomorrow you know and so uh it is on us to do our own research so the potential being uh behind our current research and fact finding is something that any person who takes the platform risk quite often celebrities like individuals are frequently so time poor that they don't have the capacity to build their own resources which i acknowledge is a very big task as I'm close to the space, I've seen behind the curtain a number of cases that I've learned that the speaker doesn't always do the work themselves. I've I had first-hand experiences where I've seen the underbelly of what it takes to create the content for a three-day boot camp covering a range of topics. All too often, gig workers are hired to create the content for seminars, often not knowing this is the final intention, which are charged out at thousands of dollars per person, and the content is a little more than a simple uh, as copy and paste plagiarism executed against a host of other online resources. <laughs> so, you know, you got to read more. It just kind of basically says that, you know, a lot of times the information that people are, are putting out there is not always the information that is, um, you know, that person writes out to themselves. Trying to link in, hit me, it's me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have you muted, you, you know what I mean? Um, you want to try and come back? We'll see that. Okay, so continuing on. Um, So in this, he does the main point of re uh, reference about um, Ponderous Crispus 
and everything. And as you can see, um, if you look at the transcript, so this question is asked by a member of the audience about finding real CMOS. Ah, oh, CMOS is saying you can make here we go, it's Condor's Christmas. In this particular archive video, you see a sample held up at four minutes in which a thin yellow twig like sample, which is what we probably know as sea moss or iron moss today. Connor's Christmas doesn't look like this. There, there is a screenshot of this further in the earth. Sea moss comes from an ocean, it locks onto a rock, onto a rock, and from that rock, it receives its nutrients. No, seaweed, as algae, absorbs its nutrients from the water around them. As they don't have complex root structures like terrestrial, like their terrestrial counterpart. This is covered by the Point Eyes National Seashore Association and the lesson plan for students and teachers on how ALG grows, created by Barrio Mera. So he, he cites these two links, but I open them up so we can show them later. How can this be possible? A plant holds on to a rock. Yes. This is a factual statement. Seaweed does hold on to rocks. This is what's known as a holdfast, which serves back as an anchor, not a root system like in land-based terrestrial plants. Scientists, scientists have yet to understand how uh, could a plant hold on to rock and then give you food. No. Consider a snippet I would like to share with you from Science and explains that seaweed is able to grow and therefore give you food as a result of stellar activity that takes place on every part of the algae where it absorbs what it needs from the water around it to grow. So basically he's saying there that um, that seaweed, um, sea moss, which is the seaweed, uses, um, it gets its food from stellar activity. And it takes place on the algae where it absorbs and needs to. So it says, well, you know what it is? Uh, they, the scientists, invented a word. This is the word. He flips the word on a chart and counts the number of letters on in the word, starting at the end of the word, working to the beginning of the word. A 15-letter word. They, the science, call it Ianthropus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to put Google on it to understand what that word is. I'm going to take you along, I guess, the whole walk and journey as we, we do all this uh, science research. Okay. Now I'd like to encourage you to take a moment to look up the word in the dictionary and psychic video on a search engine. You might find that Google attempts to correct your search and preview results for Ithropus, which is not part of a process plan or algae. So we tend to call it a plant in our articles for sake of reliability, extracting nutrients from a rock. Yeah, it's like that word doesn't even exist from from 
um, watching. This process of using electric current to target uh, specific areas in the body, training self of sweat. Child had to do that for she spent a lot of time. We wanted to pay fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So that plan has the ability to convert a solid oxide substance into a liquid digestible substance. Substance is called hydrophobic CMOS test. That. No, and all the time I've been around CMOS, I've never found substantive, substantive proof that CMOS is capable of doing this. As an algae, it is more commonly cultivated than, har than harvested via wild crafting. In fact, there are virtually no wild crafted operations left for this species in seaweed, owing to the commercial demand and the prosperity of the algae to be sustainably farmed. Every plant does that, but CMOS has iodine, bromides, it has all the minerals, phosphorus, which is good for the thyroid gland, which is good for the immune system. One of the more common species of seaweed that is cultivated in Cameroon is also found in South India, Korea, and three other parts of the world, it has two dominant iodides. One being after iodine, which has um, indicated it may be very effective in the addiction of or against the activity which is good news for sufferers of low body dementia, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's. The other side, dying, you'll typically find it in the on the similar properties. The most common form of iodine you'll find in, in, in seaweed is uh, potassium iodine. You also find iodine that the benefit that a healthy intake of iodine has on bodily functions is something we're more widely aware of when it comes to thyroid function. Bromides are plentiful as they are found both in the soil and the sea. They are estimated to be some 1,500 bromine containing compounds that are naturally occurring in marine plants and algae as well. The word of all other minerals. Is very expensive. I've yet to find a complete analysis completed on on CMOS that shows all of them. Out. Therefore, in my opinion, that we popularly believe that this is true. It's true at this point in time. One of the more inclusive studies covering a handful of minerals assessed can be found here. Phosphorus is a key element to help seaweed grow. Without it, the process of photosynthesis is more than challenging for the algae, sometimes called the microalgae. The practice of calling seaweed in open ocean waters and semi sheltered beaches has proven to yield not only better crop outputs, but also more complete mineral enrichment development in the seaweed. In fact, it's not uncommon for certain seaweed to be lacking the minerals we're looking for when they're in a juvenile state. This is where the selection of sustainable, mature algae is much better if anything when looking at the dilution, uh, discussion around wildcraft versus sustainably harvest. I think that it's important to note that what is commonly referred to as pool grown is completely different to sustainably harvested or sustainably cultivated. Seaweed that is grown in the ocean through sustainable means is grown in places that will yield a much better product compared to anything grown in a pool. The locations are typically chosen or engineered to ensure that the waves aren't so rough that the seaweed is battered and ripped apart. <clears throat> when it comes to pools, these aren't typically set up as exclusively for the purpose of growing seaweed. Pool systems will generally use seaweed as part of the mechanism for maintaining the health of the water as they are in the business of farming fish, not seaweed. That's true. Many of these these farm uh, operations, are, where they're growing the sea moss in a tank or whatever, they're not really using the sea moss to, to harvest it as a, a, a product, but more as a way as like fish food or cover for the fish and stuff, or to contain the, um, the proper biodiversity <sighs> of the water for the fish. Um, 
This is, could be where wild crafted versus full grown seamless got its legs. This, you can see weed may, <coughs> may end up being a byproduct with their operations. And typically, this is not what you, uh, this is what you want to avoid. <coughs> if you can even find it on the market. A lot of times, the visible quality of the sea moss is so poor that it's, it is used for the manufacture of fertilizer more than anything else in the operation of paint. So, I think you can go more into this and read the article. Um, this is just the beginning, right? Of where, you know, this is just one source of information. And so, I think you have to um, do that. This is interesting. He says, how to spot fake sea moss, the formation of salt crystals, um, gives it a big, a big way. You can see the difference there in the naturally occurring salt versus the, um, the what he says is real salt. So oh, I'm actually gonna. Whew, good. It's been a long day. I'm gonna share this on the group. Yeah, I'll put the links in the chat right now. Okay, so here's another one. Minerals from mycoalgae or origin. Health benefit and risk. Some of the stuff I haven't read, so I just want to go through it. And well, this is like a huge article. I'll put the link in here now. You just can follow along. Micro, marine microbiology are currently pointed as the plant uh, origin foods from the future, earning already the status of super foods, which is a marketed term for the recognition of their supposed health benefits as a consequence of their super superior nat nutritional profile and richest in bioactive uh, phytochemicals. They are very low in fat, also really they contain high percentages of mono. And polyunsaturated fatty acids and are very rich in carbohydrates, mainly dietary fibers, proteins containing all the essential amino acids, 
and vitamins including A, C, E, and those of the complex D, which are usually absent in land vegetables. Additionally, the value of edible seaweeds and, and human nutrition is also based on their richness in several minerals like sodium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, iodine, iron, zinc. Because these organisms have strong bioassertive and bioaccumulative capabilities, the mineral contents may be 10 to 100 times greater than that of land vegetables. In fact, the ash content of certain seaweeds may reach up to 40% on a dry weight basis, while only 20% dry weight have been reported for spinach, which is considered to have an exceptional mineral content. <clears throat> Most algaes display higher um, what is it, any, uh, sodium and K values in those reported in vegetables, but usually uh, low N, NA uh, or slash A ratios, which is an important aspect for food or for good maintenance of cardiovascular health since low NAK ratios are well known to promote the decreasement of blood pressure. High NA levels, however, may be regarded as one of the weaknesses of seaweed consumption is concerning that in many developing and developed countries, the intake of this element is already above the recommended daily allowances. Furthermore, calcium and phosphorus, the two major minerals in the human body alongside with magnesium are abundant elements in algae as well, present in concentrations that surpass those of apples, oranges, carrots, and potatoes. This is particularly important considering that currently are, we, we are witnessing a quick acceleration of plant-based dietary movements and lifestyles that limit or exclude the consumption of meat, eggs, dairy products, and dairy products, which are major sources of such minerals. In addition, seaweeds, especially species from the Bay of Sele, which accumulate exceptional levels of iodine, which is no, well known to be an essential element for the maintenance of thyroid function and health. Considering that iodine deficiency is a reality at at least 11 European countries, and most of the remaining countries are using iodized salts to control the problem, the introduction, the introduction of seaweeds is and population eating ha habits could be a vital alternative to ensure the intake of optimal daily requirement of iodine. Nevertheless, <clears throat> the consumption of such seaweeds must have uh, some part since the daily intake of more than 600 UG of iodine uh, for it ultimately act in the opposite direction, causing poisoning effects. So kind of like what they're saying is that, you know, this has a lot of good nutrients, a lot of like amino acids, a lot of proteins, a lot of fiber and stuff like that. But you, you do have to be somewhat careful about taking this in, in the regards to uh, maintaining uh, healthy levels of iodine, right? So you got to be careful with that. And here's a little bad thing here. On the other hand, seaweeds may also accumulate toxic metals, arsenic, cadmium, copper, mercury, uh, lead, and varying degrees that might re represent up to 200 to 500 times those of land plants. This is this fact is one important aspect to have in mind considering seaweed consumption, since it could re represent a potential health risk. Values of toxic metal in the majority of edible microalgae are, however, usually below the maximum concentrations allowed for human consumption in most countries. Moreover, one must note that the negative effect of toxic metals depends on their physical state. For example, as it is much more toxic and it's inorganic than its organic form, the latter being the predominantly found in seaweeds. Hence, even though seaweeds might have high levels of um, AS, which is arsenic, um, it does not necessarily mean their consumption will cause poisoning effects. Nevertheless, there is currently no legislation in the European Union addressing the limits of toxic elements in edible seaweeds. An exemption is made for France, which is the only European country that has already defined limits of potentially toxic compounds in seaweeds to be used for human consumption. Even through these are only recommended from Food safety authority and are not legally binding. Cool. So that just goes a little bit about the mouse, and you know, let's move on because you could really 
sit here and talk about it for a long time, even talk about uh, applications as a food ingredient in this article. Um, your bioaccessibility and the bioavailability. Worries related to microalgae consumption. Yeah, definitely take some time and read this. So here it talks about the food that's required. Seaweed nutrient physiology, the application of concepts to agriculture and bioremediation. <clears throat> so it says <clears throat> inorganic compound, or sorry, inorganic carbon, light and nutrients are required for seaweed photosynth photosynthesis and growth and interactively reg uh, regulate rates of seaweed production. Nitrogen is, is the element most frequently observed to limit growth, although in some cases phosphorus may be limiting. Moreover, because inorganic carbon in seawater occurs primarily at the bicarbonate, uh, the inability of some species to use the HCO3 as a, as a sea ice source may lead to carbon limitation, especially along tidal, subtidal and tidal pool species. This review will focus on nitrogen nutrition of seaweeds and will also consider phosphorus and carbon physiology, which may interactively affect nitrogen uptake and assimilation and consequently seaweed photosynthesis and growth. This review is not intended to be a comprehensive, but to build on the earlier reviews of Hudson and Hurd, um, I guess they did an article about CMOS. Um, maybe that. Yeah. Yeah, nutrients of physiology up to the concept. Anyway, here we align the fundamental concepts of nutrient, natural nutrient sources to seaweed, the mechanisms by which seaweeds take up and assimilate the nutrients, and the utility of kinetic curves and understanding mechanisms and rates of nutrient uptake. Next, we discuss how nutrient uptake and growth are regulated by the biotic and biotic, biotic uh, factors using both classical and contemporary literature examples. The context is that seaweed growth can be enhanced by providing optimal environmental factors such as light, water motion, and nutrient supply. I want, I want you guys to carefully notice that in any none of these articles that I'm reading, do they ever discuss the minerals availability of the rocks or the the importance of requiring the CMOS to be on the rocks in order to grow. Because it's not. And 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 that's you don't get the nutrients from the rock. Okay? It's from the dissolved water, the nutrients in the water, mainly the phosphorus and nitrogen, which they use photosynthesis to convert it, you know, into fibers and, and protein. So here we on the so uh, schematic A environmental effects regulating uptake the nutrients by seaweed, inorganic carbon, phosphorus, and nitrogen sources available in seawater for seaweed, including the organic form of nitrogen, urea, ammonium is naturally available in seaweed are in relatively low concentrations, but levels can be enhanced via excretion from marine animals, including uh, IMTA, salmon. Um, for seaweeds to take up nutrients, they must first cross the diffusion boundary layer and cell wall. Within the DLB, products released via photosynthesis, respiration, and nutrient uptake may accumulate. Once they've crossed the cell wall, nutrients are taken into the cell via active transport and or facilitated transport and or passive diffusion around across the cell membrane. Within the cell, nutrients may be stored in various pools or are simulated. The example given is for nitrate uptake and assimilation. Nitrate may be stored in an inorganic pool or converted to uh, um, ammonium via the enzymes NR and nitrate or, or, 
rid of the case. Unlike nitrate, aluminum storage is limited in seaweeds and is, is rapidly converted to amino acid via glutamine uh, synthesized and glutamate synthesis. So a lot of the nutrients comes from the fish and stuff in the area on top of that. Hello. I can't hear you. I think you have to, uh, are you talking? No, maybe not. Okay, I'll go back to the, I guess message me or, or ping me somehow so I know when you're talking because I don't know, lately people joining in as guests, they can't, um, I can't, I'm not able to hear them. So here's a diagram showing the schematic of how the sea meads get their food and where it comes from and the light, the temperature, the water movement, the distillarity. It's pretty straightforward stuff, you know. Fundamental understanding of the sources of nutrient, nitrous, phosphoric, carbon available to seaweeds, and the seaweeds' nutrient requirements for optimal growth is essential to enhance the growth conditions in any production system. When a seaweed's demand for a nutrient is greater than its supply, the nutrient becomes limiting, that is, limits growth. Um, states the nutrients. In natural systems, nitrogen is the nutrient most common the most commonly limits seed growth, with phosphorus being the second most commonly nutrient. Nitrogen is available in the inorganic forms nitrate and uh, ammonium and the organic form urea. Nitrate based growth is determined new production because NO3 is externally explored, for example, from the bulletin. Seawater and nutrients have different seasonal cycles depending on the geographic location, and it is important to have baseline data to understand when a particular nutrient might be becoming limiting for sea moss growth. That's interesting. <clears throat> that depending on the area, you might have, um, you know, limited. Um, uh, you might have limiting nutrients. Let me put some of these links. I just realized I didn't put them in all the, the chat rooms. So I'm just going to post them now. Because I think it's important for people to read up on this stuff. And check it out. Okay. <clears throat> Seaweed. Here's one. It says, what is seaweed? Seaweed is a plant. What is seaweed and is seaweed a plant? To be exact, seaweed is a type of multicellular algae, and true algae like seaweed belong to the kingdom Fortistia, not the kingdom Plantae. 
Algaes are simple plant-like organisms that are believed to be ancestors of modern day plants, lacking vellicular tissues like axillum and phloem. Plant-like algae do not uh, have true root systems. True root stems or leaves. There are two types of algae, <clears throat> microalgae and macroalgae. Small microalgae are also known as phytoplankton, and large macroalgae is called, are called seaweeds. Like true plants, both phytoplankton and seaweed contain chlorophyll and are photosynthetic. The structure of seaweed. There are thousands of species of seaweed, including, very vi including varieties that live in the ocean, rivers, and lakes. The microscopic varieties of algae called phytoplankton float around suspended in the water where they live. Seaweed, on the other hand, attaches itself to the floor of the ocean or rocks along the shores and rivers and lakes. Because seaweed does not have true, uh, true roots, it attaches itself with structures called holdfast, according to Britannia kids. Unlike uh, roots, holdfasts do not take in nutrients. They simply anchor the seaweed to a solid structure. Instead, seaweed absorbs nutrients through blades, which are leaf-like structures, notes the marine diaries. <clears throat> seaweed also does not grow stems like land plants. The blades of seaweed emerge from what is called a stripe, or a stipe, which is a, uh, similar to a stem. A frond is a group of blades that extend from one stripe. Um, some seaweeds grow air blades or air bladders on their blades or stripes that help them float in the water, according to the Marine Seaweed Council. Seaweed is divided into three main groups. It's actually four, but let's not go there. Um, or not seaweed, sorry, algae is in the four. I guess seaweed could be in the three. Seaweeds are divided into three main groups by color, green, red, and brown. Green seed is the least common. Sea lettuce is one type of um, green seaweed that grows in the ocean, and its name comes from the fact that it's eaten by um, humans in salads and soups. Um, there are more than 4,000 species of red seaweeds, including Irish moss, Connors crispus, and some types that grow in coral reefs. Each type, type of seaweed has its own habitat, and many seaweed, uh, red seaweeds grow in places where they can attach themselves to other organisms. Brown seaweeds grow in colder waters, and there are about 1,500 species in this group. Giant kelp is one form of brown seaweed, often growing in towering groups. Kelp form dense clusters in shallow waters, creating communities that are, are like underground forests. Giant kelp can grow over 33 meters long, and scientists have recorded 10 to 12 inches of growth a day in giant kelp that live in uh, Monterey, Monterey Bay off the coast of California. So, seaweeds play an important uh, partner in our world. The importance of seaweed. So it says, besides being an important food source, the parts of the world seaweed also contain anti-inflammatory, anti-microbial, cancer-fighting compounds that are used for medical purposes, according to the National Ocean Service. Seaweeds have been used for thousands of years for the health promoting property. Excuse me. Seaweeds also play an important role um, in underwater ecosystems. They provide food and shelter for fish and other marine animals like sea urchins and crustaceans living at the base of the food chain. Um, they support many other live forms in aquatic communities. Just like other photosensitive organisms, seaweeds produce oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. This is estim it is estimated algae produces 30 to 40 percent, sorry, 30 to 50 percent of the Earth's oxygen, which sustains humans and other species that live on land and the sea. As it captures carbon, seaweed also helps to reduce the acidity of the ocean. Seaweeds reduce uh, population by absorbing excess nutrients and toxins like organic chemicals and heavy metals from the water. They soak up micronutrients and oxygen in clean water, making them an excellent fertilizer for farms. Seaweeds are used in human foods, medicines, cosmetics, as well as animal feeds. 
nowhere do they talk about rocks. Okay? Nowhere. So I'm not going to go into this one here because it's so much information. But I'll put it in the chat here. Here's another site that um, is of good importance. It's called Algae Base. Ooh. This is where you can find all different like species of algae. So let's look what even with Congress. There's all these different uh, 173 matches. Usually they'll have a picture. It's been a long day. I just realized I'm the reading and I fell asleep. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, continue. I apologize. What is this the next? What time is it? It's like nine thirty, I think. I'll do a couple more links of this and uh, I'll call it a night. There sure is more people to talk to. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up Instagram. Let's see if anybody wants to chat on me. Um, let's see what people are saying on Instagram. And we're live. This is Julian Jean Pierre from the Royal Family Consumer Company. I've been chilling on the live stream for a bit, talking about sea moss and so figured I would uh, the logo yeah I just was talking on stream sharing documents that I have on um, on on sea moss and why I why I believe why I know you can't um, get uh, nutrients from the rock let me just take off my logo here. And so, yeah, I was kind of like, not getting bored, but like no one was joining me on uh, on uh, on Facebook. And so, 
I was almost starting to fall asleep, and I was like, okay, shit, let me let me switch platforms here and see if, uh, you know, anybody wants to come in and chat. It's a lot easier for people to come in and ask questions on, um, on Instagram than it is on Facebook for some reason. Yeah, definitely, Tammy. I would get uh, Yusuf to come on here and have a chat. But anyone, too. And I mean, this all started, really, because someone told me that I don't have the proof that that CMOS can't get nutrients from the rock. And I'm just, like, thinking, like, are you kidding me? I have tons of proof. I have, like, mountains of proof. I have, like, like more proof than than I know what to do with. And you could shake a stick at I could talk. I've talked, like, almost, like, just look at my past live streams. I've talked seven hours. Of talking about CMOS, showing the proof of, of why it's not possible. Like, one only needs to do the research to see that CMOS is an algae, and then you know it can't get nutrients from the rock. It's just, it doesn't have the, the sign, it doesn't have the capacity. It is just like, in, like, it's impossible, like, really impossible. And no one can explain how, how it works. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if it does, like get nutrients from the water where how does that work how is that possible you know i think that's crazy so i don't know what to say i could go on and on and on and on and um so i figured okay let me do a live stream and uh <clears throat> show the proof you know what i mean and I mean, the market is huge. Like, I'm looking at this one company, and they are farming Capasiva avarez, and they're fermenting it, and then they're turning it into a powder, and and they're they're using it as a, a food uh, for pets. And that gets crazy. You know what I mean? Like, why aren't we forming large companies like this to, to create products like that? You know what I mean? We're all stuck on, on, on whether or not it's growing on a rock. You know what I mean? It's like you're, we're so distracted. It's crazy. So... Here's another one. The bio by the botanical ocean, seaweeds and their ecology from the marine diaries. Let's put that here. Just want to switch my camera for a sure. second so I can just share with you guys what I'm looking at. So what is a seaweed? A seaweed is an algae, and algae are split into two groups, microalgae and macroalgae. Uh, all algae contain chlorophyll, the green pigment that, that land plants also have. Chlorophyll uses sunlight to make food for plants in a process called photosynthesis. Unlike land plants, seaweeds lack true stems, roots, leaves, and vascular tissue, tissues that conduct uh, water, sap, and nutrients. Uh, instead of roots, seaweeds attach their fibrous structures to the sea bottom or other solid structures using root-like holdfasts. However, these holdfasts do not extract nutrients as the roots of plants do. Seaweed absorbs their nutrients from the water column via their blades, the, sea, the seaweed's leaves. Um, with all their these yummy nutrients, seaweeds can grow and reproduce to form dense aggregations such as underwater kelp forests, free-floating uh, gulf weed mats, in the, in like sagassum, and a wide variety of species you'll find along the UK rocky shore as tufrac. 
There are many types of seaweed. You may realize from your trips to the seaside that the seaweeds come in different colors, red, brown, and green. Um, green tend to be found mostly on the top of the shore. For example, sea lettuce, brown algae, include kelp and racks, are commonly found in colder zones and are absent from tropical water. Red algae include chlorine algae, lava, and iris moss, which carpet the lower half of the rocky shore which is exposed at low tide along the coast of Atlantic. Each species is adopted specifically to where they are found and the conditions they are subject to, but all seaweeds are found at depths of 50 meters or less. So seaweeds get their food through the process of photosynthesis which uses energy from the sunlight to convert carbon dioxide into organic molecules and produces the byproduct oxygen. Uh, algae <clears throat> produces an estimated 30 to 50% of the net global oxygen available to humans and other ter terrestrial life. All three, they're not as complex as plants. They play the same role in the ecosystem as primary producers. They are the base, uh, they are at the base of the food chain and the existence of nearly all marine life, whales, seas, fish, turtles, shrimps, lobster, clams, Octopuses, worms, etc., that depend on seaweeds and phytoplankton. It is estimated that two to ten percent of the global primary production of uh, and production is uh, a result of seaweeds, which may not sound like a lot, but it's pretty impressive when seaweed habitats such a small area. Well, see, researchers have made a seaweed-derived material to help the produce, help boost the performance of semiconductors, lithium-ion batteries, and fuel cells. Testing showed that the seaweed-derived material had considerably more of a power output than the capacity of traditional graphite anodes for lithium-ion batteries. This, for example, could help double the range of electronic cars using um, completely carbon-free material. Awesome. Let's go on to another topic. This is interesting, although I'm not going to really read it too much right now. I think I'll post it for those who want to read it in the chat. It's called cool. <laughs> the environmental. Risks associated with the development of sea moss farming in Europe, prioritizing key knowledge gaps. No, because it doesn't really go into, it just goes into the, the talk of farming. So as the blades of seaweeds absorb the nutrients necessary for growth and development using them for metabolism and photosynthesis, the iron is an important nutrient as it plays an essential role in chlorophyll production, <coughs> which is cr critical for photosynthesis in phototopic or organisms such as, excuse me, such as seaweeds.
Cool. So it's talking about um, can dissolve iron from in this root promote seaweed growth. So if they add iron to the water, will that make the sea moss grow faster? the information <laughs> what more do I need to show you know what I mean it's pretty you know it's self-explanatory follow those links and you will see for yourself you know another one is from uh, or an organization called the Caribbean Natural Resources Institute and they put a guideline series on sea moss and the cultivation of sea moss. And um, they have, um, I think it's on page four of their book called The Biology of Seaweed. And so I'm going to share that page. Wait. The group here. And I'm going to, I guess, skip most of the top of the page and go to um, the second paragraph. I'm going to read from the second paragraph. Yes, the Caribbean National Institute the biology of seaweeds. <clears throat> this is something that a lot of people m miss in their research on finding seaweeds and sea mosses. So let's go to the paragraph two here. It says, most of the world's commercial seaweed species are reds or browns. Only reds are used in the Caribbean. Like all seaweeds, they have no true roots, leaves, or flowers. Plants consist of branch fronds attached by a holdfast to a substrate such as rock or dead coral. The whole fast anchors the seaweed, but does not absorb nutrients like the roots of flowering plants. The entire seaweed uh, plant absorbs nutrients that are dissolved in the surrounding water. This is an important feature in farming seaweeds, as cutlings from plants can be anchored to any substrate, such as ropes or nets, as long as the water conditions are suitable. Sea moss has a complex life history, which includes both asexual or sorry, both sexual and asexual phases. There is an alternation of generations from identical looking male and female plants which produce gametes for sexual reproduction to other identical looking generations which produce spores. In addition to the free living um, plants which grow mixed in wild populations, there is a small parasitic phase that develops in the female plant. This phase can be seen in the reproductive female plants as small bumps on the branches. Spores are released into the water and drift until they become in contact with a surface that is suitable for them to attach and germinate. The settlement and germination of spores is, is the means by which the species spread and colonize new substrates. The most common substrates for spore settlement are rocks, stones, dead corals, and shells. But some species can be found growing on almost anything such as discarded cloth, uh, plastic tires, rope, bricks, and wood. Okay, you do not need to grow sea moss on a rock. And not one of these articles that I've talked, read, or repeated, or reviewed, or whatever showed you, really speaks to anything about the importance of having a rock involved, except for the anchor, you know? And so we really need to get away from this idea that, like, just because it's grown on a rock makes it that you have no proof 
like please like this is really bad overall for the industry because we're just like we're confusing people we're confusing ourselves you know and it's not necessary it's like completely completely unnecessary hey what's up maria how you doing i hope all is well what's up um oh, i know it's B city something CMOS. I forget. Oh, uh, crazy. CMOS is going crazy now. You know, there's a lot of um, demand for the CMOS, that's for sure. You know, I've watched our business uh, do quite a bit. Like, a lot of sales have grown in the last uh, couple weeks. Like, it's pretty crazy. You know, was not expecting it at all. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm I'm glad you enjoyed the info and stuff. You know, I love sharing it and everything. So it's been pretty cool. Um, I got to do a course soon or something where I go in depth on marketing and um, like Google Analytics and stuff. I've been thinking I got to do some kind of like mastermind. Group. I talk about this all the time, but you know, for the for those real serious hardcore people that want to up their game and want to invest in the CMOS, you know what I mean. I want to really start focusing on working with people that are looking to do like a hundred pounds or more per month in sales. You know, and really sort of help them build up their, um, you know, their knowledge and their experience so that they can sell more products. I spend. Oh fuck! You know you buy a chip, you like poke my gum in like a really bad way. I don't even think I'm eating them. What? Well, yeah, there's a lot of study thing that I've been doing on um, Google Analytics and Google like audiences. And um, keywords and stuff like that. And I really watched it sort of um, help scale up my sales to where I'm like doing maybe twice to three times more sales than I was before, you know, I started the advertising. Um, so. Yeah, I'm slowly just kind of learning the stuff, figuring it out, and I'm going to um, really start scaling it in the next few weeks. I think I just I'm ready to scale. The thing is, I know, like I guess I'm ready to scale in my heart. But what I need to do is get my packaging like straight. I need to get my my um, boxes straight i need to get my um supply straight so i think by next weekend i'll i'll have all that done and it'll be something where you know once i have everything done I, and i have all the orders i can scale it and just put like you know what i mean um i can just start pumping out those orders because i'm not even scaling it now and i'm already like about over 100 orders behind mm -hmm. And some of it's because, you know, we're waiting on supply on this and we didn't, you know, replacement on that. And so I don't want to scale it and you know, like invest all this money into marketing to get the people to the site to only find out that, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble getting orders processed because it's so low and then people start complaining and then that hurts sales. So. Gotta avoid doing all that. Anyway. 
for sure. Give me a second. I'm going to go and grab some uh, water. Hey, let me know if any of you guys want to join in on the chat. And uh, we can talk a bit. I'm thinking I might get a juicer soon. I'm going to have more juice in the house. I'm drinking up juicy juice. So, yeah, I've been um, spending a lot of time learning Google audiences and um, just the marketing and stuff like that. Ad where, like, I got to get back on the Facebook. I haven't been advertising on Facebook. I wonder how how Facebook like is it is like which is better Facebook advertising with Instagram or is it like Google AdWords you know that way or that better like which would be the best um, method. And some farmers online, everybody's going to bed early because they're getting up to plant. Because, you know, for those that haven't noticed, CMOS, uh, we're going through, at least with St. Lucia, we're kind of going through uh, a little bit of a drought, I would say. Um, it is definitely more difficult to get CMOS than it was before. You know, like, compared to, say, the beginning of the year. Oh, yeah. And the price has gone up significantly. So now um, the price has probably about doubled in the last three months, the local price, which, you know, is kind of a good thing. I'm happy for it. I'm, no complaints from me. Um, it's something that I've been sort of warning people about how well was going, what's going to happen. You know, and I don't think people understood this. And this is where I was kind of saying to people all the time, like, look, you need to step up your game. You need to um, understand how to market this product properly, right? One of the biggest sort of strategies that people try to do when they come to sell CMOS is that they just try to beat everybody on price. Okay, um, I get that, you know, in a lot of ways, if you're not experienced with business, right, if you're not experienced with selling, it's, it's natural for you to kind of have this sort of, you know, I guess, what was the word we call it? Like you would just default to say, oh, the cheapest price. But the reality is with the CMOS market, and we took time to study the CMOS market, you can understand that the cheapest price is not always, like people don't always care about price. They care more about reliability and um, quality, you know, authenticity. And so they understand that, you know, they might have to pay a little more for a better quality product. So, one, when you go and you try to advertise your product as being the lowest price, unless you back it with a strong reputation of who you are, people are gonna kind of like go, oh, like, I mean, I know I would. They'd be like, well, why, why is this CMOS so cheap? What's wrong with it? 
you know what I mean, compared to a guy who's got the highest price, um, all his marketing and attitude kind of says, I don't care. If you buy the CMOS, you buy the CMOS. If you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. Compared to someone who's like, oh, please buy my CMOS. It's the cheapest. No, you don't want to have that. Um, so, you know, that's one one aspect about it, like why you don't want to be sort of like the cheapest. And then two, like you you're 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 leaving yourself vulnerable for price um, fluctuations, like what's happening now. The price is fluctuated, right? W what do we do? Like it's gone up. There's people out here that were basing their price, like trying to get CMOS to sell for like say six bucks and trying to make money and selling it for fifteen. Well, when the local price now went from six bucks to twelve dollars US, you know, you know, you're not making that much money selling fifteen. Whereas had you been trying to sell the product for like say thirty dollars or forty dollars a pound, uh, I mean you'd have more room, you mean know, to to sort of um, negotiate or or to to um, absorb the these price fluctuations, you know? and so I feel sorry for those that you know that have been trying to sell their CMOS for you know under twenty dollars a pound. You know what I mean? You, you, you just, you're in for a rude awakening. Because you won't be able to get that CMOS for that price, at least not from St. Lucia. And I think what's happening now is St. Lucians are becoming wise and they're realizing, okay, shit, you know, um, they, they don't want um, the, to, they don't want there to be a repeat of what happened in the last couple of years where the price dropped so much. So I'm pretty positive that those that are still in the CMOS, at least in St. Lucia, as the price goes up, it's it might come down a little, but I don't see it coming down um, anything significant. Um, so these cheap prices that we used to have, they they're they're gone. What I run into is that there are so many variables in selling price on the, on the U.S. side. I pay so many fees that I didn't really understand until. Uh -huh. That is another thing, too. And here's the thing. Like, when you are dealing direct with someone, like when you're I guess, dealing direct with the CMOS farmer, it doesn't make sense you going that, that route unless you're buying like minimum 500 pounds but really you should be buying like 500 pounds a thousand pounds when you when you're dealing direct with some of these guys these farmer guys because it's, it's just it's not worth it for you and it's not worth it for them you know what i mean by the time you add in all the costs and the fees and stuff like that because there's a cost like to pick it up there's a brokerage fee there's, you know, I think when we get a shipment, there's us picking it up alone is an extra five, five hundred or six hundred dollars just to pick it up. Just with customs clearance and renting the truck and doing that. And then you have to add the shipper and stuff. And if you're buying directly from a lot of these CMOS farmers, then you know, what I mean, you're going to pay their local fees which is with hacks and stuff like that. So that, that shit adds up, you know? I know one girl, she told me that by the time she got some free CMOS on her special, and she said by the time she paid for it to ship and she received it and everything, it was, it was more expensive than the CMOS that she would buy off me and I would deliver to her house. You know? And so... And you're not always uh, assured of the quality that you're getting, especially when you're trying to get the cheapest price. You know, it's hard to um, satisfy someone at the lowest price 
compared to someone that's willing to pay whatever price you ask for. You know? Even now, like, there's some people that just, they, they've had to, um, how do you say it? They had to get out of the business because they just can't supply the sea moss because the price has gone up so much. And so they can't, they, you know, I'm getting calls every day, all the time. People are asking, you know, if I can supply them, you know, with sea moss monthly. Like, it's funny, had they called me like two months ago, three months ago, we could have worked something out, you know what I mean? And even by now, we would have made sure that we, you know, like we're working to increase supply now so that we can sell more. But like, we, you know, we would have been ahead of the game had they let us know. Or, you know. Hey, what's up? I can't seem to hear you. I don't know if that's a mute on your end or not. Are you talking? Can I hear you? Maybe you can, uh, you guys might even want to try talking me on uh, Instagram. Should have got the TikTok out here too. Uh, whatever. That would have been nice. Click on the link in the comments and add audio before joining. I don't know why. Um, this restream is so, you know, it's it usually works pretty well, but I think it has something to do, like, if you try to join it on your phone, it's, like, different than if you join um, as a regular user. I'll invite some of you guys to talk. I'm excited to kind of get back into the game and start scaling up and stuff. And um, really been taking a look at um, Google ad, ad, Google audiences and learning that. That's really sort of like helped up my sales and stuff. As um, you know, especially with the Google Analytics. If you run your Shopify site, you have to get the Google Analytics connected to your um, Shopify site so that you can see, like, what what sales you have. Like, I can see, like, the last seven days what I've sold and, like, a dollar amount and revenue, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you know, I've sold... Like in the last 30 days, I've sold 104 one pounds of gold. I've sold 68 pounds of purple, single pounds, 60, 50, 54 single pounds of full spectrum. And then, come on. Ah, excuse me. I've done 44 items of 10 pounds of super dry gold sea moss, so that's 450 pounds. I've done 36 packages of two ounces gold, 34 uh, items of five pounds. So that's five times 34. 
that's what, like 170 pounds of gold skin moss. So 170 pounds, that's like 250 pounds, 300 pounds of gold skin moss in one month or so. That's crazy. And sometimes you don't realize like how much you've sold or that you sold that much, you know? Pretty interesting stuff. I think one day I will um, click on the link and all talk to them today. Just got done training 40. Yeah, I can imagine training 35 people. Oh, my throat has been really itchy. I think it's partly the allergy. So I'm scratching my throat. Yeah, those are for the last 28 days. And then I think if you can compare that to like the previous 28 days, you know what? I'll even do it like the last seven days compared to the previous seven days. Like some of it's like a forty percent increase. Um, gold seam, the super dry gold sea moss ten pounds. I did a five hundred percent increase week from from this week to the week before. I think a lot of it has to do with um, my interaction with this new piece of software that I think is like the illest. Um, actually, maybe I'll do this little video now and I'll send it to them and, and be like, okay, you know, <laughs> you know, um, I want a free, uh, you know, month or whatever, cause I'm going to like, uh, do a little bit of a, a demo on audience and if I can switch this camera so that you guys can see me on the audience. My boy Seamus Avenue. What's up, bro? Hey, hey. Can you hear me now? Yeah, much better, much better. Yeah, yeah. Damn, somebody would call me. I'm calling call back. <laughs> yeah, what's going on, man? Yeah, we're being a little technical difficulties earlier. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely speaking some good stuff on the rocks, on the rocks and everything. That's thanks, that, man. That's good because yeah, you can't really get no uh, nutrients off the rock. Like you said, everything is coming from out the water. And everything, and you just think about it like it makes sense, like you know what I mean. One plus one, like yeah. rocks is, you know, how much can you really get out of a rock? So, like right? you know, sometimes you just gotta use your head with this stuff, you know. For sure, for and, sure. But and, some people already know they get crazy, man. They, oh, da -da -da, my grandpa, da -da -da, yeah, like, <laughs> bro, it's like that's how this whole thing started yeah. today because I like, and then bro, it just it just irks me. I don't mean it. But imagine you're in this industry. I've been doing this for three years now. And it's like you've been preaching. And then you you flip and you see this video. And they've taken so much time to be like, oh, and you know it's real because I've got the rock on it. And da 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 And I'm an authentic see, And it's like I want to be like, no, you're not. You don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so I, I'm the worst, bro. People... And it was so funny because I, I was on TikTok, this girl. Um, so I said this uh, like on the thing saying, you know, you know, the nutrients can't get on the rock. And she's like, oh, why don't you show proof? 
blah, blah, blah. Why don't you go to the group and show proof? So I'm like, okay, word. Yeah, I'll go to a group and show proof. Like, like, fuck. I'm sitting on a mountain. Of... Yeah. And and then she's like, everybody, every everything that everybody says about you is true. You need to stop creeping off my page. <laughs> yeah. Which I find is hilarious. Yeah, because it's like... But I think true true talk, it's like the main thing I think they have a problem is the fact that I'm coming on their page and I'm like it's like I'm getting up in their face and being like, Hey, you know that everything you fucking you believe in and this and that is a fucking lie. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I understand you standing on it. Yeah, I understand that part, but at the same time there's gotta be a certain point where they gotta be like, Okay, let me list let me just make sure this guy, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to argue with, like, for me, it's like, if I'm going to argue with you, I'm going to be like, well, let me make sure I know what I'm really talking about before I start arguing. You know what I mean? And then I look, you know, silly or whatever. I don't know. But I it, guess in a, in a regular world, that makes, you know what I mean? That makes sense. Then you will argue with somebody that knows exactly what they're talking about, and then you might not even, you might be 25% of something somebody else told you. you of course... Nowadays, nobody looking a book to find, you know, mm-hmm. information. They might go on a meme or real or so, and just that's just hyper depth. Nah, do your own research, like you know, like you said, like do your own research. Figure out exactly the ins and outs before you go off and off. Don't know what you're talking about, making yourself look not as intelligent as you, you could be, or you know, probably yeah. are. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. it's like I don't know. I, I just I, I I I don't get it. Like you could be talking about so much better intelligent stuff. Do you know what I mean? Than to say that this yeah. this is the new like talk about the vitamins. Talk about like uh, yeah, yeah. Talk about how it helps with diabetes. Talk about how it you know lowers yeah. blood pressure, kill cancer cells, study circulation, like start. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But they just go, oh, does it grow on a rock? I hear it all the time, too, bro. Oh, is it growing on a rock? Like, yo, like, come on. Like, Fuck make you. it make sense. Are you even taking this sequence every day? Are mm-hmm. you even taking this sequence every day? Oh, no, I know. I should, but I know it is. Like, oh, man, like, come on, bro. Like, uh, it is. Honestly, between you and me, I think that if I really wanted to, and I'm not trying to, like, fucking boast, but, like, why let me rephrase it this way it's my it's my belief in in telling the truth and the full honesty that has actually hurt my business like i know that i lose a lot of business because i insist on on telling the truth of what's really happening do you know what i mean and so but i'm okay with that do you know what i mean like i get it but it just i don't know it irks me, like I said, to see how people are continuing. Because at the same time, I'm thinking about these farmers, bro. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. the amount of videos that I watch where these guys, like, 90%, I'll say this, 90% of the videos that you see where the guy's diving for the sea moss, if you were to pull out 10 feet, you would see the sea moss farm and everything. Uh-uh. They, they literally crop it. So that, you know what I mean? Like, my friends told me that they've gone up in the... I've been there, too, where I've had guys come down, and they're, like, telling me, okay, we, we need to angle the shot so that we can't see the farm. We don't want them to see... I'm like, what? Like, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. But... Yeah, and a thousand words, you're getting a... Uh, not even a bird's eye view. You're getting a pretty much a couple feet away of exactly what's going on. You mm-hmm. have a great understanding mm-hmm. of the CBOS process. So yeah. like that that alone should just somebody should just be like, all right, let me go, you know what I mean? Obviously he's uh 
because you have to be knowledgeable with a lot of this stuff. A lot of people, they go to club with questions. Some people, yeah, they want you to get on the wrong answer, but it's like, why? But it's just mm. like, you know what I mean? It's just like, if they want you to tell them something that they want to hear so bad, like a lot of people mm. meet, oh, it's purposely more so. Oh, it got other barriers. And like, so, so it gets to a point sometimes you're just like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, and it's, it's just like, it's crazy, but it's all off of, hearsay or she said or I heard of this like like what the taste oh how does it taste uh and it's, it's not so it doesn't really have oh it's the texture and like come on man like, uh -huh. but when you but when, when you go to the doctors you're not asking them you're not asking them what this medicine tastes like when they're giving it to you you know uh -huh. you just take it so yeah. but when somebody that may be you know so it's good I'm getting, I'm getting this call real quick I'm gonna come I'm, I'm chill right back in like five like okay. three minutes no problem so me me that this is like you're you're asking if my CMOS is wildcrafted. This is where like the whole conversation is starting. Is that you know the idea that people think that that wildcrafted meaning CMOS that comes off the rock is is nutritionally better is absurd. The 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 rock does nothing, absolutely nothing to the CMOS. The only thing the rock does and can do for the sea moss is keep it from floating away. That's it. That's the only purpose it serves. It can't get minerals from the rock. Even logically, in theory, that 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 idea does not make any sense. Like it's absurd. Like because in order for that to to have any weight, right? Then all rocks need to have the same levels of nutrients. Otherwise, your sea moss will be imbalanced. Do you know what I mean? How do you know that there, you know, like, did, was this rock that the sea moss grew on, was it feeding in enough nutrients on it? Like, and in fact, it's not like the um, the sea moss. The sea moss builds a lot of these nutrients and proteins through through the growth of it, and so the food that it feeds on is nitrogen, um, phosphorus and carbon do you know what i mean and from then they build all the different nutrients amino acids and blocks and stuff like that and i mean some of it okay they absorb some shit like from the ocean you know what i mean but not all of it you know and so in fact cultivated sea moss is actually better and 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 is like you know safer for you and 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 Truth be told, the majority of the sea moss, if you're getting any gold, pretty sea moss, it, it's, it's been cultivated. You know what I mean? That's how we get it clean and stuff. The stuff that they get in the wild, you don't want to get it. Uh, do I sell Condor's Crispus? No, I don't. I only sell sea moss from St. Lucia. Um, that's the only sea moss I know and I'm familiar with. But... I can always introduce you to people that do sell the Condorus Crispus. Um, I'm, I have, you know, contacts with farmers that that harvest it in New Brunswick, and so you know, if you shoot me a DM asking about it, I'll send you some details on how to um, reach out to those guys. I think it's uh, Rory at uh, Atlantic. Sea veg or something like that. I'm not too sure. I'll have to look it up. But like, <clears throat> really, sea moss. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, right? Sea moss cannot get nutrients from a rock. Sea moss gets the nutrients from the dissolved uh, minerals in the water, the nutrients in the water, and many of these nutrients are coming from the uh, from the land. Um, through from river and rain uh, rainwater runoffs, when we have like high um, high levels of rain coming down, it, it it adds nutrients to the water through the groundwater, and that's one of the reasons why St. Lucia's sea moss is so highly prized and, and and you know considered some of the best is because the nutrients that are coming off the land is some of the best. You know what I mean, and um, it mixes in with the the volcanic currents and all this you know the springs that we have all around the island um yeah that's it's that's how we roll you know what i mean and um beyond the quality of the water you know what i mean 
there's more than just that. It's also the the way that the farmers harvest the sea moss, the way that they clean the sea moss, the way that they dry the sea moss. That all have, has an effect over the overall quality and nutritional value, much more than if it was on a rock or not. You know, I mean, that's why I kind of like always laugh when I see guys, even like that guy Poppy Seamoss, where he's like, oh, look at the Seamoss I'm cleaning and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, bro, okay, yeah, you buy a lot of Seamoss, but like, and you make a lot of gel, but like, you, you, you know, what the hell are you talking about? Like, oh, look, it's got the raw, like, <laughs> it's like, I get frustrated because to me, I, 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 I get, it irks me when I see people that are like feeding into um, this marketing stuff, like basically pandering to the crowd and, 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 and sort of, it's just like a sellout. It's fake. You know, you're right, Melanie. He's a fucking, he is a clown and he's just, he's just, he's just a goof. <laughs> like I've been wanting to like really, um, I'm gonna invite some of you guys to talk. I, I'm going to like. I really want to. I want to have a debate with that guy. I want to really get him on a live stream and just kind of fucking point out really how much he lacks. Uh, like, like he is not an expert to be talking about CMOS. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about that poppy sauce moss guy. Is he in, he in, the, he in the group? He's not in the group. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start going into the. I'll be saying something a little bit of a shenanigan. But I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get a little bit more into it. Like, I gotta see telling people for a long time because there's been so focused on price trying to save a dollar here or two dollars here you know what I mean it's like yeah. they you know in the long run you if you don't have the sales it doesn't matter what price you pay for the sea moss <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean you got no sales you got no you got no money but like yeah. if you focus on the sales at the end of the day it like even for me right now the price is going up because my price is I've I've for, I I've never focused on getting the cheapest sea moss. It's almost like there hasn't been much of a difference. You know what I mean? Yes, the price has gone up, yeah. but it, I'm used to paying this price, and my 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 whole business alignment adjusts to that. And and I'm not focused on the price. I'm focused on the volume. Do you know what I mean? Like moving, reaching as many people as I can. Yeah, that make, and that makes that just makes so much more sense than like pretty much like when when the, when the prices are going up, you already had your prices set to a certain place where it doesn't even matter if you know what I mean if the numbers go up an extra five or ten or whatever the case because you kind of got it set up to a point where you're not trying to get rich off of one pound of sea moss. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You'd rather try to get off fifty or a hundred or whatever the case at a, a good, a, a reasonable price and, you know what I mean, still be able to do numbers opposed to uh, it, when it gets so cheap that you're not even making money off of your own product. So, you yeah. know, stuff. So now you're, you know, you, you pretty much hustling backwards. Like, Bro, yeah, man, they gotta, they, gotta, they gotta make sense, man. It's like, God, it definitely gotta make sense. So like, well, here, even though, you know, I, I look at it like, uh, even with the c you know, we make money on it, but... The more, the more benefit we're getting out of it because we're helping people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
But in the same breath, it all still for your time, your gas, still make it make sense. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, I can use your head, too. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. So, you know. No. No. It's crazy, man. No, no, you're right. And and you got to focus. Like, see, you, you were, you've you been doing it smart. Like, bro, the amount of people that I talk to, and I, it's like I say this, but it's like I know I'm shooting myself in the foot because some of these people, when I tell this story, they're going to say, oh, that's me. But the amount of people that I talk to where it's like they're telling me, oh, I'm running a business and I need this CMOS. You know, I need my one pound. And I'm like, one pound? One pound? I'm like, how are you making money? No wonder you got to break me down on the price. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, yeah. and, and then to me. You're breaking yourself down. You're not even giving your business a chance to do anything. How is it going? You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're cutting your own head. But, like, say somebody wants, they want 15 jars of moss, like, you're done. Bro, exactly. Bro, you should not be, first of all, you should not be starting with less than five pounds if you're getting into jail. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. less. Yeah. And then after your first re like your next re up, you should be getting at least 10, 15 pounds. Like look at you. Like the amount I don't want to say how much you get, but you get enough that it's like you don't have to worry about it for weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll be good for about a couple months or a week, whatever. But yeah. And and that's that's the worst thing I believe in with the C Moss game with any game is you never run out. Yeah. You never, you never run out of what you, what you, what's your, your business. You never run out yes. of your business because as soon as you run out, that's when everybody and mama will call you. <laughs> and now you want to cost, now you want to cut the sea moss man out because you was lacking all in your hustle and your grind. So now your customers looking at you with like, like you got three heads. And now you're going at the supplier like he did wrong because he wasn't taking your yeah. your your business serious as you should. So yeah. like you can't get mad at the you know what I mean you gotta get mad at yourself, but and ex, you know experience. Remember, like you can't never run out. You know what I mean? But yeah. That comes a lot of times as well with experience. And that, like yeah, you never you know what I mean. Even if sometimes you see most you know sell slow up a little bit, never run out of product because you just never know. It's going to be some slow weeks, and then some you know some good weeks, and you know what I mean. But you gotta you never run out though. It's like the money still has to be has to be ready to you know rock and roll when it's time to go ahead and end your business. Yeah, people are not managing their business consistently for the growth. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like I was saying, five pounds. Is like what? Uh, here, what is it? Let me just go to the US here. I'm just going on my website just to kind of illustrate people the point. Like, okay, so five bucks, five pounds is 150 pounds, right? And 15 pounds is $400, right? Okay. One pound should make you enough to be able to afford the 15 pounds. Just period, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that even oh, even if it's over, two pounds, over, over, still, yeah, yeah. So it's like if you have five pounds, you should be able to take two pounds of that and just devote it to reinvestment and still have profit of three pounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you get fifteen pounds, and then like the, the 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 shipping cost for fifteen pounds and the shipping cost for five pounds are almost identical. So why are you? Sh- you know what I mean? And not only that, like you, you should be thinking from your supplier too. It's like because some of these guys we include free shipping, so they're like, "Oh, I'll just take five pounds every week." But it's like, no, man, you're you're killing me. Why you want to waste your time? Yeah, you burning me out. You burning my gas up, and not even you know get cocky, but it's just like, yo, like come on, like just go go, and not even the supplier being greedy is just like make it make sense, like yeah, like. You like invest in yourself, like if some, like if somebody like uh, somebody told me that like a long time ago, like invest in yourself. You're a walking business, like you yeah. you have to uphold like your this is your business. This is this represents you a hundred times. You know, mm-hmm. somebody might come to you, hey, I want to do such and such. But you you want to be prepared, you want to be ready. So it's just like and then like the price, especially if you talk and tell them somebody like you, you're giving out good prices. You're able to you know sell. Advantage of that, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Of course, everybody got bills and things of that nature, but 
That's why I tell people, like, see most is a good contact type, but also where, you know, it's not really so much double. Sometimes they can get to triple or quadruple, depending on how you do it. If you're, you know what I mean, playing it a certain way, so it's like, mm-hmm. you just, you got to use your head, like, yeah. and, don't, and don't get, and don't get uh, intimidated by, uh, you know what I mean, it, it's what it says, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, so I mean, mm-hmm. even if you have to build your contact, you got to slow walk it, but you know, it's you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot coming with it, but just make it make sense, man, for mm-hmm. the supplier and for yourself. <laughs> don't burn, people don't like to get burnt out, mm-hmm. man, don't, nobody want to get burnt out, because it's like, it's just crazy, like you. <laughs> but it's like some people don't understand that they think, oh, I'm just spending the money. It's not always about the money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's about the money. Money go, money coming and go. But good people, good, you know, good uh, customer service, good business practices. You know what I mean? That's, that's what makes that's, that's what builds relationships. And, yeah. You know, and and that's a good point because like, look. You may not you may not do this business for the rest of your life, right? But this is a learning experience. That's what a lot of people don't realize is like, you know what? Once you master this, do you know what I mean? Like you can you can apply this to anything. So it's almost like why aren't you putting your fucking whole life into this and stuff? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. God's giving you an opportunity to sell a product, whatever that product is, learn how to sell the pro- the shit out of that product. And then, you know, if you don't like, maybe you don't like CMOS, but like, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a skill. Yeah. yeah Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, think yeah, about this. I don't understand, like, like, see, like, some people, like, even my mom was selling CMOS for a while. She was like, it's a, it is somewhat of a harder grind, but it's not to a certain extent. But you, like, some people want stuff just to fall in their lap. Like, you yeah. have to... Be knowledgeable of the project, like, like we was talking about a little earlier. So, like, yeah, some, sometimes you have to, you know, maybe have a little charm, know how to, you know what I mean? You can't just be like, you know, your attitude, your energy, all that plays a big part. People like to buy from people they like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, so at least make it, make like, cut, like, pretty much boiling back down to customer service and things, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Talk and like how you how you will want someone to talk to you when you you want a product, you know what I mean? And but I think the the best thing is just get knowledgeable. Like you gave some good, you got some good posts or, or excellent information. But it's always good for people sometimes to go get that information on your own as well. Put mm-hmm. put in the time for your business if you want the if you want. Yeah, I mean, you gotta put the work in. It doesn't happen overnight, man. It's, it's, it's a process, like that's so true. definitely a process. Definitely, definitely doesn't happen overnight, man. Oh, I don't know, man. You gotta, it's, it's the hustle, it's the hustle and bustle. You gotta, you gotta be willing to, you know what I mean? Kind of put forth your all. You gotta give it your all, man. You can, like sometimes when people when I talk about Simo, I get a little excited, but it's like <laughs> it, it does something to me. Um, it does. I don't know, just, I guess, as far as, like, I actually was at the, at the doctors, went to the doctors today. They, my, my pressure was good, you know what I mean? My mom take her moss, her, her pressure is always good. And these are good things, like, especially in, you know, uh, different ages, different race communities. Like, yo, how pressure is killing our people. Mm-hmm. Diabetes is killing our people. Thyroid issues are killing our women. And, or, you know what I mean? Issues and things. So, this stuff is very important. This is not... No, like, no, you know, we're over the bridge. A lot of people think this is like, nah, this is like for death. But we kind of got to take it that way. We're kind of, in a sense, we're doctors. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we're not, you know, we're not, you know, we, 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 we get certified from the earth, if, if, if that makes any sense. So, yeah. And we, we had, I'm pretty sure we all are, we all are plenty of people say, hey, man. You help me lose weight. You, I some come my cousin say hey, you help me give me a different outlook on my health and like yeah that, that makes you feel good. So like take that and I think just drive with it and um if that doesn't make you you know want to sell some seamos I don't know what you know so like but you gotta want it, you gotta want it yourself too. Mm-hmm. Never gotta want it yourself. But you know you you brought up some good point um this is station. And, and that is like, you know, we're, we're spreading this health and stuff like that. And I think that, like, as you say it, I realize, like, we're really doing ourselves a disservice in the sense that, like, we're, we're, 
beyond Dr. Sebi, you're not searching for the knowledge. Do you know what I mean? So my example is this. Okay, yes, there's, so say you believe that there's 92 minerals, but most people don't even know what half those, they don't even know 10 of those minerals. Do you know what I mean? They don't even know what those minerals do and why they work. And okay, do you know what I mean? Like, I think I should do a video where it's kind of like, okay, yes, it's got 92 minerals. So what? What is that? Yeah, what, yeah, what the what fuck does that they, mean? What do they consist of? What are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Give me some, give me some ramifications. And you know what I usually do? Uh, uh, like back to like old school days, which, which they don't do so much of now, is to get in my brain is the right, right, like say, even if I did um, look it up online and write it down, that it helps it try to get in your brain a little mm-hmm. bit better. Like write it down. Or just have the paperwork most boxing you are done. I mean, just in case you want to refresh your mind or, you know, because we, we talk about it every day, but it's still, it's so much knowledge and so much that CMO literally does for you that a lot of stuff we probably don't even know, but it's like, it's just a lot of information. So it's like, why not have, have it around you? Or mm-hmm. it's actually, it's, it's kind of a great product so much because it's for all, all ages. For, you know what I mean? It's, it's for everybody. And it's like, it just it's it's the things that it it has in it, man, to help people is just kind of incredible, honestly. Like, it's, but like you said, it's, it's the knowledge, man. You gotta have, you gotta have the knowledge. We that we need, we barely are scraping the surface of the knowledge. That's a fact. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think you know most people. And I'm not trying to throw shame on them. It's it's more about trying to highlight. Just keep it, just keep it. Actually, she was doing really, really good. Um, she was she was, uh, she was making like a thousand dollars in like two days, man. She was kicking butt, man. That's bad. But she was more into it for the money. It wasn't it wasn't like from the heart. So like it slowed down and she kind of stopped stopped rocking with it. But it's like you can't just do it for the money. Like you know what I mean? I was saying, damn, I'm get some smoothies. Do it. Oh, it's a lot of work. I'm like yeah, sometimes the the stuff you don't want to do, that's the important stuff. But that's how you might get the real money that you really want. Those couple extra steps. It mm-hmm. was like, yeah, but, man, it's, but, it's, but, it's, it's just it's important, man. It's like that's why you can't. You gotta do it sometimes. Like even when you got your seamos in that water, man. Hold it. Like you, mm-hmm. you feel this light. Light's coming off of that. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, man. It's, it's heavy. Mm-hmm. It's ready. I got some of the. I actually got have some of the uh, vitamins and stuff next to me, not not too far away. Yeah, iron, sodium. Calcium, iodine, copper, magnesium, rotate, you were talking about that, iron, potassium. Yeah, man. Promotes uh, wellness to increase vitamins. But here's, here's the just, thing. It's, so, a, it's a lot, man. It's crazy. What? Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, you just talking about some of the vitamins. I had, I had someone pretty close. As I was saying, you got to keep that stuff close to you, man. You never know, man. You might get a call. So I'm like, yo, uh, I want, I want to, you know what I mean? I want, what well, you are, I might go for a fantasy loss and then like, hey, tell me, I, I know this particular vitamin, vitamin A, what, what's it good for? We're kidding, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. you might not know that answer. And they might be like, man, I wish you were like, all right, man, I'll give you a call back. And we all know what that means, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, you go to someone else. The guy got the other guy got that other Seamoss guy called in, and he was and he was ready, and he had that answer. So it's mm-hmm. like it's a little stuff sometimes, man. Like sometimes it, 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 you can walk yourself out of a cell sometimes. Oh, sometimes people give him too much. Like you know, yeah, the, like, <laughs> you, you you just go yapping, yapping, and you know, gotta be careful. But I just want to touch something back where you were talking earlier about the money. Like I get it. Like a lot of people say, oh, you got to do for this month, but to me, I have no problem with someone that's in it to make that that's in it for the money, like sees the money and stuff like that. But what you got to realize is that, like, if you're in it for the money, be in it for the money, right? Make a business out of it, put the time. And if you're looking at the work and saying, oh, oh, this is too much work for this, then find someone to replace you. Do you know what I mean? Move like treat, treat it like a business and, and move on up. Because the reality is, okay, I'm not 
how do I say it? My top priority is not making money, but I my priority is to make money because the money that I'm making is 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 going to make the the my true priority. Like people, no, that makes sense. But yeah, some you need, people don't they want the money, but don't want to put forth the work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you are somebody that does put forth the work. Like you talking about your ads and this. Like you're willing to invest into yourself, and like that has to be mandatory. Mm -hmm. That you can't say you want the money, but don't want to put the work, work in for the money. That, so like, that's facts. Well, it has to. It has to make sense. Yeah. Uh, and put the time in it though, and then and make some money, man. Like don't don't do that. Like I know this buddy of mine, and like he he, he what's crazy? He should be the number one fucking CMOS seller herb guy. He's been doing it for the longest time. He, you know what I mean? And before every, and every time I talk to him, he's always complaining like, oh these guys are all making money and all this. Is that. And then I'd be like, okay, well let's do this to make money. He's like, I am I ain't about the money. I'm I'm here to heal people. Like, yeah, like, then yeah, shut the fuck up. Because either way, like, you know, this might do, you know, people got bills and stuff. So yeah. Make the money. We, do, we definitely still, we got bills to pay. We got kids and things of that nature. So, you know, we're going to have to do what we got to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you want, you do, you know, you want the money is still. Or just, just, you know what I mean? Listen, you. Gotta, you like, why not make money to help to help people? Why not? If you are going, if you want to get the money, you do it in a good way. Exactly. You know, be positive, and, you know, just and be, and you, you know, you get blessed when you do help people. So just be righteous yeah. about it. Do you know what I mean? Right? Just be righteous about it, and you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's like yeah. honestly, that's sort of my code of life in anything. Whatever I do, I do it in a righteous manner. If I look and say, okay, I don't think this is righteous, then I'm, I'm not doing it. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes you, you have to do certain things that might seem unethical, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a righteous thing to do. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, so that's how I see it. And, you know, we... We need to make money. You know, we, this, the business doesn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They, like you said, we said it costs five, it's five, five hundred just to start pay the guys and everything. You know what I mean? So, like, at home, yeah. man, you gotta, you gotta, make, you gotta make those sales. And it's, and it's doable. It's doable, mm -hmm. man. It's cool. You know, one, one of my biggest dreams for St. Lucia is for us to build this CMOS industry to the point where we're um, reducing crime and we're creating sustainable livelihoods for 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 St. Lucians. Oh, you know yeah, that's, that's good. Like, no, this... And, that, and that's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Same, definitely, you know, we get emotions from St. Lucia. And, then it is, and I believe it's so much, it's so much with, you know, the farm and everything that St. Lucia and every, like, damn near everywhere now, it's like, mm -hmm. so many people have health issues, so many people, this can help so many people if they just mm -hmm. be kind of open-minded about, you know, taking, like, oh, I don't like how it tastes, this, the that, the third, like, yo, like, this helps you, this is, this, mm -hmm. this helps a lot of people, you'd be surprised, man, like, If explained right, 
everybody will take CMOS. I've never met someone who, when I've taken the time to explain exactly what it does, that they were not curious or interested in trying. Now, sometimes they might not put their money up and buy it, but if you were to give them a free CMOS and say, here, take this and try it, they'd, fucking, they'd be like, hell yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. And maybe that's something I should do. That would be a crazy marketing scheme. I think someone's so done it already. I think about stuff like that, like giving people CMOS and all that, and I'll be one too, but some people like playing your face, they'll take it and waste it. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of, but I mean, it's like, People do what they're gonna people do. I'm not a wasteful person. I don't like wasting food. I don't like, you know what I mean? So it's like, then, then don't get kind of, to me, it's a smack in the face. If I give you something and you don't, usually I'll think, at least if you pay me, you'll, you'll at least think about taking it. You know what I mean? It's like somebody take it off. I'll put it in the fridge. I have people, oh man, I paid for that. I left it in the car. Like, oh, all right. Like, yeah. I do, like, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, it don't do those type of things. Like, this is for, for you to consume a budget. Like, I want you to understand that your health is important. Like, yeah. You know, but if you if you were to give this to 100 people and say 10 didn't utilize it, would that make you upset? Nah, no. no okay, no, then, no. then don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the reality is, is that the majority of the people that you give it to are going to use it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's only a small percentage, maybe 10%. You know what I mean? And and once you identify those, you just never give it to them again. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's You'll it. Find out. Yeah, You'll you, find out. you gotta find out. you gotta test the market in a sense. You know what I mean? But I think it's the energy and the act of you just giving that stuff away. Like people don't realize, like that the, there's a lot of like un un how do you say it? Undercover laws of the universe. What's up, Yusuf? So, like, the law of sacrifice. Do you know what I mean? The law of reciprocation and stuff. So, when you're giving these stuff and doing stuff, it's like, you know, this, this is, it comes back to you. Do you oh, think? yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten, 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 mm-hmm. Even, ten, even ten, like, with these live streams, like, me sitting here helping people out, you know what I mean? The, giving up my time for this, it, it turns stuff, you know? It's like I get blessings in other ways for doing it. I may not make a sale. Like, I've never sold CMOS off of doing these live streams. 90% of the people that watch these live streams. Nice. Try doing a four eight ounce trial. So, that's a good idea. But I think if I were to do a trial thing. That's actually a great idea because, like you said, the ratio, like, yeah, sometimes look at the ratio, like, if I do, because I, I know my, my bro, uh, I know my bro Ma's boss at, when he does his pop-up shops, he does do samples, and a lot of people do chime in with the samples and stuff, so it is, it is a good idea, you know what I mean, or maybe give them, like, a four ounce jar, I like, try this out, take a couple tablespoons, maybe you do it for two to three days, see, you know, you know, it's a mild laxative, see if it cleans you out, you know, blah, 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 so, mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. If I did it, I would give away, like, um, whatchamacallit. I would give away the gel already made. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't give away free raw CMOS. I would sell the gel and say, this is what my CMOS gel, like, this is the, what the gel is going to look like for my CMOS. Uh, what's up, Yusuf? I actually had a good, I had a good gel. When I first kind of got into the CMOS, I was having a good run. Like doing like monthly supplies of the raw, like monthly supplies of the raw, like 20, 30 bucks. And it was doing pretty good, but it was slowing it up because a lot of people don't like to make their own CMOS. So I still start having to sell the gel, but at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't overnight in the gel. Now I do, but yeah, it was, uh, people don't, sometimes people don't want it. They don't feel like making it. Like they feel like, like you do it, you do it, you know what I mean? So oh, like, totally. all right, whatever. Bro, like a, a large percentage of the people don't want to make it. You know what I mean? And that's what I was kind of explaining to some people because there were people that I would get to and they would be like, oh, you know, um, people have been asking me for the dry, but I don't want to give them the dry. 
going to cut into my business. I'm like, bro, those guys were never your business to begin with. That's why they want the drive. Hmm? What did you say? Yeah. So are you saying the video went up? Yeah, his video. I, I see a buffer. Oh, oh, his video went out. He, yeah, maybe his phone died. So where are you traveling? Look at you in the dark with your red light on. Uh, I'm, uh, I left, um, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh. Nashville, yeah. like 100 miles left. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. So you're on the road right now just cruising? Yeah. So when you drive, do you like have like autopilot on or how does it work? It doesn't even look like you're driving. Yeah, I, I have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have like a cruise control sometimes, but I don't like you. Yeah, I didn't know they made uh, automatic uh, semis. I always thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Most most people switching over to automatic semis now. Mm -hmm. You don't want to deal with that. No, I can see it, man. Like, it's it, it like it doesn't look like you're driving at all right now. Yeah, I have a couple of drones. Um, and actually, yeah, I got two now. Uh, I got the DJI 3 and the 2. DJI 3? Yeah. That's the Maverick? No, the Mini. This Mini thing is fucking bomb, bro. Bomb. Um, I spent a little bit of extra money on it, but compared to the um, the 2, let me, let me go get it real quickly and I'll show it off. But compared to the two, it's like night and day. Like it has so much detail. Man, this guy's driving slow. Oh, right. there, I think Buddy's back. Yeah. So, yeah, I got the. So, this is the uh, DJI 3. Yeah, I figured. But I'm showing my drone now. This is the DJI 3, which is like, okay. it's super small, but bro, the, the, the pictures and the, the quality is like killer. And then, so it has the little thing here. And so this thing too, you can do it uh, portrait or landscape. Oh, hey, that's tight. Yeah. Yeah, turn it on. I guess you go with fly. <laughs> pretty much fly that around and get footage and everything. Yeah. So I'm using this for the, the footages on the, the farm, the CMOS farm. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Oh, that's what you've been using to get your, get your footage? Yeah. 
Yeah. So okay, that, 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 that camera is pretty good, though. Yeah, it's got sensors in the front, a sensor in the back here, and then a sensor on the bottom. So it's got collision avoidance and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, they, they make some of the best uh, drone. I think right now they like the top. That's like the top puppet right now. That's the only one I see in the store. For sure. And I mean, I got the um, the DJI oh, controller yeah. with the screen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. bro. Uh, you ain't got the helmet yet, but the glasses. No, that's for the, um, what did it call it? The first person view or whatever? Yeah. But this one, it's like, um, I'll show you when I get in design. Like, what's cool is you have the ability to change the perspective of the camera. See how it goes like that? Oh. It can yeah. go landscape to portrait. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah, that's nice. I, I know some of them carry the GoPro. I know some of them be having that GoPro on. I'm not sure if that's how they come. The older ones do. Yeah. Yeah. Or or like even the Mavericks and the older the one. But this one's designed like it's like the smallest one that they make. And it's designed so that uh like I can fly it anywhere without a license and shit. So that's the smallest one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's because I know I was looking at one of them. I wasn't sure if it was a if it would be a good purchase or not. Oh, this one's bad. All of them are good purchases. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to me, it's like if you want to travel and take like because all the other drones they're big. You know what I mean? And they can be kind of clunky. Whereas this can fit in your your backpack or your camera bag fairly easy. Yeah. You know, like I actually want to put a, a camera bag together because I have these cameras too for the guys down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's actually crazy how much camera footage they have there yet. These guys should be pumping out footage every fucking day. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That content, man. Definitely. Especially with it. I think it's, it's, you got to get that good content, though, too, you know? Yeah, it's not easy getting good content, you know? No, I don't know. You gotta get good content, man. People like hey, you, you, know. you can have some trash uh, 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 video. The people know how to edit it. And mm. like the, 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 like the, you know how to, uh, what is it called? Like when they take the, the, the raw footage and they kind of fix it up, make it look better. And, yeah, I'm not that good you know, with that. Post post production and stuff. That's something I'm trying to get into. That's something I'm trying to get into because I'm uh I'm doing a uh, podcast soon, so that's something I'm trying to get into. Okay. Uh, uh, post production. Uh, yeah, I use uh, I Final Cut. Like you said, I don't think it's that hard. You just definitely gotta get into. It. I think you just gotta get into something you gotta get into. It's like anything else, like basketball, any sport. You just you get better with practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? More practice, just playing with it. That's yeah, true. I think it's time. It's kind of time for some, but I guess you you can get one of these out. Yeah. So you know, if you put that in life, you get out. So you know. Mhm. Yeah. 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 I use Final Cut for mine. It does pretty well. Final Cut Pro. Yeah. That's the software I use for my my video editing. But there's so much like different softwares nowadays you can use. Sorry, I was like watching my um, my Google traffic on my analytics to show. So this is uh, to give you guys a little brief view. These are the amount of users that I had in the last uh, seven days. So one point eight thousand new users. One point, so maybe a hundred repeat users. This is like in the last few minutes. This is cool. It like can show you like exactly who's viewing my website and where. Wow. Yeah. So I got. Okay, so that's how that works. Yeah, and this is on Google Analytics and links to your Shopify. So there's someone did that, viewing. Did that, did that place? No, this is Google Analytics. So I link that to my Shopify. I think you could link it to your Wix site too. Yeah, my Wix, my Wix has my analytics and stuff with my, like it gets up in the last 30 days 
Yeah, but bro, you got to link it to your the Google. You got to get Google connected because, bro, it's like fucking steroids. Like I can go over my overview so I can see like where my traffic's coming from, from who and stuff. Um, I can go into engagement. I can see like what they're engaging in, you know, the sessions for users, like what pages they're at and stuff, uh, right? No, this is free, bro. Oh, this is all Google Google Analytics, right? And so you can see and understand what your traffic's doing. So it'll show like my revenue for the week, how many purchasers, how many were first time purchasers and stuff, and then even show like what items they purchased. You know, I'm down like, you know, in the last week compared to the week before. I'm up on this product, you know what I mean? And then where, where it even really sort of like takes, like goes crazy is when you get into audiences, right? And so let me go back here. Let me go to the audience, Shopify traffic. Where is, how do I get to, oh, here it is, settings. So I go to the settings, I go into this thing called audiences, and now I can show different audiences groups, right? And then I can create an audience, right? Based on whatever parameters I have, right? So I can do recently active users or people that have engaged in a particular page. So here's user engagement, right? I can add a parameter. The parameter is, I don't know, an event count. I don't know. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing right now, bro. <laughs> but there's supposed to be ones where it's like, um, like I can do like, like they looked at a web page. You know what I mean? Or something. Okay, let me see if I can go. These are people that visit my website. So here, here's one where I got recently active visitors. These are users that have been active on my website in a in um, whatever so many days. What? Yeah, or I can even do like people that went on my site that abandoned a cart, or people that went on my site and didn't purchase, right? And so the formula is like include users when they make a purchase or some or they don't. Exclude, oh, so this one is non-purchasers. So exclude users that have made a purchase. And then so there's this many people in the audience, but then you could take this audience and make like a lookalike audience. Right, so so I have all these audiences here that I built: non-purchasers, all users, and stuff like that. Right, but when you go into um, Google AdWords, you know what? I should actually do this. I'm, I'm on one channel and, and no one can see what I'm doing on that channel. Let me see if I can put the page and share it. Just give me one second. There. Let's see. Yes. So there we go. So those on my Facebook can see what you guys are seeing. So now I'm in my ad Google Ads thing, right? Shows like how much clicks I did today, uh, or in the last, I think it's seven days. How many clicks? How many purchases? Sales? My cost per click? The ROAS? This is the return on ad spend. Basically, for every dollar I spent on Google, I got uh, 
or say for every hundred dollars I spent on Google, I got uh, one hundred and twenty-two dollars in sales from that, from from the results. So you're you're in a grade, you're not in a grade, you're in a grade. Yeah. So, but like ideally, I wanted to get up to like five hundred. But where where Google ads shine, where any ads shine, is in the audiences and the creations of the audiences. And if you look into, and that's sort of what I'm trying to learn right now and study is understanding how to build proper audiences in, in Google, because like here I have all users of my traffic website users, you know, it's got these many people, but so these are the audiences, which I can decide to stream the products to or stream the ads to and so the better i get these audiences at the the more i'll save money on advertising mm -hmm. those pretty much people that already they all they need to do is see something about promotions or they are they repeated customers yeah some of them are or look at this one similar to win back our opportunities from clavio so what this says is like um the automatically created expanding segment with similar interests to those people in the win back opportunities in Calavio. So in my Calavio app, I've identified based on people purchasing on my site, people that like are interested in my site but haven't made a purchase in a while. And so I put them under my win back, meaning that I want to stream ads towards them that would win them back to being buyers, right? But what I've also done was created a market that's similar to those same, same sort of people. And so the idea is that you, you basically find people that want to buy off your site and then find people that are like those people that want to buy your site and you make sure you stream the ads only to them so that you're not spending money just randomly throwing ads out to people. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much it. Pushing it, pushing it out, pretty much. It's mm -hmm. Pushing it out. And just see, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, figuring out who to push it out to and, and why. You helping you to lock down your audience, to lock down, you know, the people who you, you know, do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Or potential customers. Or anyways. Yeah, and so you can have data segments here. You can also build audiences, <clears throat> which <clears throat> I think a lot of these audiences are combinations of the groups and the different segments and stuff. And so I've created a couple of these audiences, and I'm running them on different groups and then using those to see which ads like perform the best. Yeah. Like here, this one here, I have a conversion for performance max. I spent seven hundred and sixty dollars on the ads. They gave me eight hundred and thirty-nine conversions. At a cost of ninety nine one cents conversion, and the rate of conversion rate was three percent. Mm. And so I, 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 I mean, that's some kind of thing, man. Especially making something out of nothing. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. No. So it was like plus is always negative. negative. For sure. I'm trying to see if there's a way to see how many sales I got from this one. Um campaign yeah so here it was um total cost seven hundred and sixty seven dollars Average conversion rate was 3.9. Conversion file, 6.47. Average conversion cost, 
conversion. See, part of this is trying to understand what it really means. But I think basically, I, I, I it cost me like ninety one cents per per person to go out and and um, link on the website, like to send them to the website. Or maybe that's my cost per click. But some of these, you got to keep the conversion like low. Like I have one where the cost per conversion is twenty dollars. That's crazy. Mm. But even this, I think, like, I got to look back at this, but I, so I have the campaigns here and audience, all campaigns, and then I'm looking at audience performance, you know what I mean? People looking for CMOS, people looking for old buyers, looking for new buyer choices, optimized targeting. I'm looking at like depending on these. I think this one here. I was I used more audience segments and then added more links. So it's I guess you like that's the challenge is trying to find like the best audiences and how do you, you know. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to play with some of these audiences. I want to try and get the bigger audiences and sort of like the, what do they call them? The, um, Similar to. Now look at that. 27 people have visited my YouTube page in the past 30 days. That's not good. Not good at all. Have you guys, have you, um, CMOS Avenue, have you thought about doing any, like, uh, Google AdWords or marketing? Oh, like getting a seamless Google Yeah. Yeah, that's one of I think I got to do like a, like a course or something like that where we go into detail on how to, you know what I mean, build the right audiences and stuff like that. Sometimes you gotta see who your audience is, so you know, so you definitely can go and have something to go off of, or yeah, or something new to go off of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. New customers are always good, always a plus. For sure. You guys always got to be finding new ways to, um, you know, get uh, yeah, yeah. more that's business. Dude, that's, that's mandatory. Mm -hmm. That's like sort of like my, the day. That's what my day spent is trying to, you know, how do I um, do better than the day before? How do I, you know, max yeah, my, uh, max cool. my Mm -hmm. It's been a wild man. It told me a long time ago. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, man. That is facts. So yeah, true. A thousand ways to skin a cat. So true. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there's always a back door to everything. See, I'm happy you got me on this, though, man. Definitely, man. We got to. 
I feel like this it, until discipline. I got discipline to a certain extent. Yeah, but until we start researching beyond this n idea of 92 minerals and stuff, it's like it's going to be harder for these people to to realize that they need this. Like, like the more I think about it, the more I realize that the, the main reason why we're this CMOS is not more popular is because we're focused on 92 minerals rather than the actual minerals. No one knows what the minerals are. Even even to know twenty of them. <laughs> yeah, man. Even even I listen, even I don't know all the minerals. Do you know what I mean? Like like real re real talk, we all should know at least ten or twenty like nutrients in it and what those nutrients do. You know what I mean? No, I, I know a lot. Like I know there's magnesium. I know there's phosphorus. I know there's calcium, selenium. You know what I mean? Like all these other stuff. But it's like it's, but, it's but, like all you gotta do is look up uh, non-essential and uh, essential minerals. You'll get like a uh, yeah. You know, essential or non essential minerals, that are kind of like a baseline. Everything else probably but even, you know, probably don't need. Yeah. But even just not knowing only knowing that, but we also need to know like what are the uses of those yeah. nutrients. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like why why do you need iron? Why do you need yeah. zinc? Why do you need um you know um selenium? You know what I mean? A lot of people don't realize how beneficial or the polysaccharides you know what polysaccharides are in there and why you need them what about the taurine you know what i mean like people don't realize that there's taurine in there and that can aid in in in, in helping the um reducing the fat cells or whatever taurine does cells burn fat you know what i mean i actually got a few i got a few here i want to say magnesium anti-inflammatory regulate heartbeat Blood pressure mm -hmm. promotes bone health. Um, again, a lot of you know about the calcium bone health enables muscle contraction, improves heart function. Mm -hmm. Zinc's another really good one. Boosts immunity, regulates blood sugar, and promotes a healthy heart. Uh, you said selenium uh, boosts immunity, promotes thyroid health. And it has strong antioxidants. Mm -hmm. and, um, vitamin K uh, produces protein for bone health and normalizes blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's just that's a lot. That's nice. Is the building block of proteins. Muscles 
in, in enzymes in air. Yeah, so yeah, this, this stuff is just like this. This ain't no like mediocre type of things that you know what I mean. We're not getting this in yeah. our, our regular diet. Mm-hmm. What's happening? We're not getting these in our diets. So no. Like, yeah, no. Uh, right now, so we're going to take advantage. And as of now, you're saying that the moss is going up, the prices are so bad. So take advantage of this because the next five to ten years is going up. Mm-hmm. It's going up. Man. Like, we're not going to want to do it, but it's like, then people are going to be hit then. Like, you feel what I'm saying? I like, hate, like, when you come back around. Like you gonna get taxed. Like I ain't, I'm gonna be, I ain't, I'm gonna be hurt. But like, you know, it's business, man. I, I still gonna wanna heal you, mm-hmm. but I'll help you out and all that. But it's going, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. You gotta so, tap in. You gotta, gotta tap in while, while, you know, while things on the grass is green. Yeah. Well, here's the thing too. If you understand more about what's in the sea moss and stuff, you could sell it for a higher price. Cause, bro, I have people that are like coming to my health food store to get magnesium and they're using magnesium for all different purposes. Like some people are using it to help them sleep better. Some people are using it so that they can shit. You know what I mean? Some people are fucking, it's all crazy. And then it's kind of like, if you said to someone, Oh, you have constipation here. CMOS has this much uh, magnesium and, and this magnesium is going to help you go to the washroom and, and, and unblock all this and this and that. Oh, and on top of that, the magnesium is needed for all your bone growth and shit like that. Oh, it also has calcium in it. Did you know that the calcium is going to stop your osteoporosis? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all, bro, like, I know some people. Anybody with a right mind is going to say, yeah, let me get some of that. Or maybe I should get two jars. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Bro, I have some people that come in the house store and will spend $200, $500, two to $500 on supplements and a lot of the supplements you could probably take sea moss and for like a majority of them you know probiotics all kinds of stuff but then there's no one's talking about what the uses are and what's in it and and then uh the official food therapist no i don't have a book with all this info but there is a book out there by um kirby uh jamari kirby if you go into vegan fiber or Google Vegan Fiber, they they sell a book called CMOS Ology, where it is like the, um, it goes through the whole science and history of CMOS and different types of CMOS. Okay. It's almost like uh, an introductory, like it's like, a, not a, I don't want to say introductory because it's not like it's basic information, but more like, it's almost like a standard mo- manual for anybody that's in CMOS. So, like, anybody that wants to get serious about their game in CMOS, I recommend they get that book and read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have I'll a copy. Send I'll send me the link. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll send it to you later. I have a copy, and, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, they gave me a free copy, and I went over it, and it's very... I think it's, I have it's a copy stuff. of that, too. Yeah. Is yeah. it the green book? Yeah, the green book. Yeah, yeah, I have a copy of that, and the other one that, that, that talks about CMOS, seaweed, and uh, it talks about seaweed and mushroom. How to cultivate it and, and stuff like that, how to uh, grow it and things. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Vegan yeah, fiber, CMOSology. Yeah, I gotta go copy. They have it in audiobook, hard copy, and um, I don't know, e- ebook too. Like soft copy. They gave me, they shot me hard copy, which was really nice of them. And I, I got to read it, which was good. And then even the audio, they sent me an audio copy. And it's one of those ones you can like listen into the car. It's very readable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you gotta get that book. You gotta get that book, man. That's, that's, that's mandatory. Make it, just make it, make, just make it, just make it make a little bit more sense. Like, and some people like, you gotta break it down to them. It'd be hard, but it's just like, yo. It just, it's really just good to go in the diet. It's not hard to take. Like I was saying tonight, I was, you just throw it in your tea, you know, you know, throw it mm-hmm. in your drink tea, throw it in your tea. There's no quick smoothie or, so I, I haven't even cooked with it before. I put it in some turkey burgers before. I haven't done it in a while, but it's like, it it's actually have, better warm, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much it's better warm. It's better warm. I like you. Come on, drink that stuff cold. Good grief. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's the magnesium in it. Oh, the magnesium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, the fiber too helps it clean you out real good too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Plus, plus is like you're not trying to be funny, but it's, it's basically like blue fucking intestines. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty it, much what it be. That's what it, it be. Coach your stomach as well. It coaches your stomach mm -hmm. as well. Real good. Cause I actually got a big job, man. I gotta finish taking it, which is this dusting. But I have to. Yeah, yeah, man. Gotta get it in, man. It ain't about what, like, I was saying, when you go to the doctor, the doctor gives you some medicine. You ain't asking the doctor, hey, man, what it tastes like, man? Or you just go, you just go, you ain't gonna ask yeah. nothing. You just gonna take it, and you ain't gonna, you feel what I'm saying? Young, is that wild crafted? <laughs> I need to make sure I get all the nutrients. <laughs>
But it's like, it's so bad, it's to the point, it's like they trying to take us out, man. You know what I mean? They ain't trying to really give you nothing with no seeds in it. You know what I mean? You gotta, I guess, try to, I try to hit like the local uh, pro, pro, produce spots. Even people selling out a truck, whatever, to get some good, you know, fruit or whatever. It's hard, man. It's hard, man. It's like, but that shit hard, man. It's, it's crazy. Then you know, yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother story, man. But it's like, yeah, man, it's wild. So it's like, it, I'd rather get mines from the earth. Let me get mines from the earth, or I can trust the earth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, like I mean, I trust that they say, you know, the man above. They say he left everything out here for us. He's already out here, so you know, damn that. Mm-hmm. They, they, the people, they get it. They get it. They know ways how to get stuff, but then they, they step on it and don't. They don't give you the. They're not gonna give you the maximum. Because it's a business, they want yeah. they want you to come back. How are they gonna make money? And, uh, you know what I mean? So they make trillions of dollars off of, off of people. Mm-hmm. So it ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't no, it ain't really nothing to play about. That, that, it's, it's really a doggy dog, man. When your mom tell you when you're a kid, you know, like your family and you know your close ones gonna be with there. Mm-hmm. The, this world is this world is just wicked. Like you know what I mean? So it's like. You gotta take it. We gotta. We got a few options out here. Take mm-hmm. advantage of them. Mm-hmm. Why you? Why you? Why you gotta start at it? Maximize it for sure. Was it home building? Yeah. Yeah, I'm chilling at home. Where? Where? Your dog at? Huh? Where your dog? Um. No, I'm at the condo, so I'm not at. Um, oh. I'm not at the other home. I have, I have multiple locations. <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> Whenever I need to hide out, I got a place to go. <laughs> yeah, man, you got to go out of Every, every uh, man needs a, their own little, like, you know, independent pad or whatever. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah, but I guess with the, you know what I mean, the business, you got to have, you know what I mean? And then the stuff, keep it, gotta be focused right there, you know, no distractions. Mm-hmm. Nah. Well, that's the thing, too. I kind of, like, ended up moving out on my own because I found that um, living with my family and stuff, it was just, it was, you know, too distracting. And I wasn't, like, you know, the business wasn't getting the attention that it needed because I was, you know, not focused or, you know, just on other stuff that wasn't important. Not to say it wasn't important, but was distracting me from what's really important. And, you know, I realized that, like, you know, I can just focus on this stuff for now. And then when things are a little bit better, which they will be soon, um, Mm -hmm. I can take a step back. But at this point, it's almost like it needs my full attention. You know, I have too much of a good opportunity here that I can't um, uh, let slip away. Yeah, because I wasn't giving it the proper focus. I even think that, like, for the last couple of years, me and my partner, we were discussing it. It's like we we should be a lot further ahead than where we are. And when we ask ourselves why aren't we further ahead, it's all our it's us not taking things seriously and just you know maybe we're having too much fun, mm-hmm. and that's okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather yeah, have you, you learn. You learn too, so you know mm-hmm. you go about things different ways. Mm-hmm. But now we're at a point where, like, we really should be, like, I guess, exercising our muscle or, you know, um, being confident in the position that we're in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we should be investing a lot more. You know, the business should be, like, fully kind of, like, automated. We should have employees. You know what I mean? Like, we should have more, like, you know, booking done, this, that. You know, it's running like a business, but not like a business business, you know? Maybe. <laughs> you know what I always said is like, if we were to start selling the gel, we'd do it, but we would have to do it like based on my partner's traditional recipe. And so we wouldn't do the gel like how everybody does the gel there. Here, we would do it like in the CMOS drinks, like how he does it. And um, his drinks are awesome. They're good. And I mean, 
there's some of the best on the island. Like people love them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like his tamarind yeah. juice. Mm. Oh, he make a lot of. He definitely make a lot of. I've seen some people make a lot of money off them drinks and all that too. So it's like it's definitely uh, money worth them. Them drinks. Yeah. But I think for us mostly, I would get more into the production business than I would get into the actual selling of the drink. So it's almost like I want to be the guy that you come to that makes your drinks for you. Like there's not enough of these processors in the CMOS space that understand CMOS and stuff and law. Like you can't really go anywhere in North America and get someone to make gummies for you easily and cheaply, CMOS gummies. You generally have to go to China or outside of the country from what I can see, right? But imagine you had a guy that like not only understood CMOS jelly, the making CMOS gummies, but also had like source for the best CMOS and had like, it's just like, all you got to do is put in your order. I need 80 jars. You know what I mean? I need this. I need that. So that's where I kind of see our like official position or our future position is not so much capturing the sales you know what I mean, competing with other people for sales, but being the support system to support them on their sales and being able to do it for everybody, you know? Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Pretty much making it, being, a, being, a, being accessible uh, when needed or, you know what I mean, just being, being a, always being an avenue mm-hmm. for the sales, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Including with the operation, mm-hmm. but man, I'm about to start getting a shower and everything, man. You keep me in tune, D, man. Yeah, man. They love the whole CMOS family. You know, they'll be going to stay tapped in, pushing out this good knowledge and good information. All the time, bro. I always love talking to you, man. Chilling, even just on the yeah, right phone. Yeah, know, man. We, we we definitely pushing the help, man. Pushing the heart. Mm-hmm. And we, you know what I mean? And we. we yeah well you know i've been talking about it but i really got to pull the trigger i think i'm really going to set up like a mastermind group of like uh and i'll start it where it's maybe open invitation but i'm going to go take everybody that i know that has spent say like more than like a thousand dollars at the business mm-hmm. and then kind of invite <laughs> no bro you got you got vip guest list don't worry yeah. But but you know what I mean? Invite people that are serious to say, okay, let's have a like a like a once every other week meeting where we talk about the industry and we talk about the knowledge and then you know maybe I'll do some research and, and get some information. And honestly, if I get a big enough group, I can invite people. Like I know people in the St. Lucian Ministry of Agriculture where I could call like I have their phone numbers where I could call them and say, Hey, can you do a private talk with, with these these sellers? And and have you answer questions about CMOS and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And and get in more into the knowledge of what's going around the world and what's happening. Like other companies are doing it. And the reality is, we need to start learning of more about the actual benefits in CMOS beyond ninety two minutes. <laughs> Outside of just the ninety two. Like what, what are the ninety two and what does the ninety two do to your for your body? Like mm-hmm. for the break like for this, for this. or give us a good like you said, a good five or a good ten or a good fifteen. Yeah, like, you know what though? That gives me an idea. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna create like a YouTube video saying what are the ninety two minerals in CMOS? And then one of the first things I'm gonna say is there are no ninety two minerals in CMOS. <laughs> But these are, you know what I mean? These are the minerals that are, are in CMOS and why you, you know, you should use them and how they affect your body and stuff like that. And go through, you know, say the top 10 or 20, you know, and start oh, pushing. Man, you're slow for you you bring, you bring it up. I think you bring it up. Who, me? Yeah. Well, no, 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 you're not. Okay, I got to come closer to the screen. When I get closer, then they don't fuck around. I'm like, Instagram, don't fuck around. <laughs> yeah. Nah, man. No, man. We we definitely gonna stay tapped, bro. Come on. Oh, we'll meet you tomorrow. All right. Cool. Hit me up. All right. Yeah. 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 Y
All right, bless us, Kay. Be safe. Right. Y'all be easy. You too. Take care. All right. Much love. Much right. love. Much love, bro. Yeah. What are you saying, you sir? Driving, driving super slow out here. <laughs> like an action, making jokes on me because I I got Scarborough internet because I'm in I'm in Scarborough. So in in Toronto they have this suburb called Scarborough, and like every like no one wants to admit that they live in Scarborough. Why? Because it's just it's not to say that it's a nice neighborhood. Like the East End to me is way better part of Toronto, but it just gets a bad rep in the news and all this stuff. Like I'm so I used to, I work in real estate, right? And I remember once these these executives called me, these or no, these interns. They were coming from like Germany and they were working at the BMW plant as the interns. And so the yeah. the company was paying for their like lo, like their accommodation and stuff like that. And I remember I went to show them the places and they asked me the neighborhoods and I, I had mentioned Scarborough. And so they, they, they ghosted me. Right. And I was like, what the hell? Like, like, you know, you know like, why did you guys ghost me? Like, if you don't want to see the place, just say you don't want to see the place. Right. Um, and then they're like, oh, sorry, we didn't want to see the place. I'm like, well, what was wrong? with Because the they picked out the place. Right. So I'm like, what was wrong with the place? They said that when you mentioned that the place was in Scarborough, we have a brochure that was given to us by BMW that basically says, don't, like, don't, here's the places you can live, and here's the places you shouldn't live. And one of them was Scarborough on the list. <laughs> oh, what's going on over there? Yeah. A lot of crime. There's, there's some areas that have some high crime. They have some gangs there, and you know what I mean. There's shootings and shit like that. You know, there was, there was you know, there was one time where there was a big turf war. But it's like wherever there's, like my ex-wife would say, wherever there's bad spots, there's good spots. Like you can't have, yeah. um, you know, a good neighborhood unless you're surrounded by bad neighborhood. But when I tell people, like when they ask me where I live, I'll say, oh, I live in the Guildwood. Right, which is a neighborhood in Scarborough. Right, it's like a prestigious neighborhood, but I won't say Scarborough. Or I'll say uh, I grew up in this area called the Beaches, which is on the lakeshore. But now I live north of the Beaches, like it's in Scarborough, which is north of the. Be but I would tell them I live in North Beaches, <laughs> which is like a fantastic neighborhood. Like I just made it up. <laughs> It's like the beaches, North Beach. And they'd be like, North Beaches? And I'm like, yeah, you know where the bluffs are? We're just north of the bluffs. <laughs> the, the Scarborough bluffs? Oh, don't say Scarborough. <laughs> uh, no, that they go fussing on the mics. What? What happened? No, they they was fussing on the radio. I heard the uh, other truck driver talking on the radio. Oh, they're talking shit. What time is it yeah. there? You you do is it? Uh, I guess it's late to it's it's better to drive late at night. You know what I mean? Because there's less traffic. Or... Hell no. Nah. Same amount. Uh, going through the cities. Yeah, it's probably less. Mm hmm. Probably less traffic, but um, nah, it's probably the same amount because it's like oh, it, it's it's a lot of there's a lot of trucks out here right now. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't like driving. I don't like driving at night overnight. I, I don't really like that. I like to if it's at night, I like to stop at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. seven o'clock at night or eight o'clock. Like I don't really like to go beyond it, even though I'm going way beyond it now. And I, I, I look at it a lot of times. Like, it was time when I stopped driving at 7 o'clock in the morning. I drove overnight. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. I was finished. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I like doing it. Because I can't sleep once the sun come up. It's like, well, I'm up the whole day. That's not good, yeah. And you don't get any proper rest, and then you're still tired. And that causes more accidents, I'm sure. Yeah, that, that's what that's what happened to me yesterday. Uh, the place was supposed to be, 
you know, they were supposed to have my my load done when I got there. Mm-hmm. When I came there, instead of me dropping an empty trailer, they had to load my trailer. I was like, well, that ain't what they told me. So some stuff just happens and is irritating, but mm-hmm. well, which that's my fault. I should have took this load. Uh, with, with they they kind of played me on this load, but I shouldn't have took it. I uh, was so. How'd they play on the load? And it was like, well, this is the only load that they have that, that's picking up today. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, you might have to wait the next day. But they ain't be lying. They say all type of stuff to make you think you have to do stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to drive. I had to drive 200 miles just to go pick the load up. I don't think that's right. Like, if I drive 200 miles, take me for those 200 miles before I go pick the load up. You know, but they don't like to to pay empty miles. You have to keep going back and forth arguing with them about that. <laughs> you know, but companies don't like to pay that. And it's like, nah, like you you should pay me because I, you know, I don't work like that. It's like I have to pay my own taxes and stuff like that. I mm-hmm. I pay myself, so you know. They like to try to get over, but that's every company. Everybody do the same messed up practices, and that that's the thing I don't like about trucking. Yeah. Everybody do the same, like, messed up stuff. Yeah, and it's like, it's almost like repeated. You always got to be like, oh, not this again. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the trucker life, I guess. <laughs> Well, yeah, my little setback, but I'm about to get back, uh, about to get back straight to the, uh, yeah, this has to be my last go around than this. This truck right here, I mean, it's a brand new truck. What? This, this is my last, this is my last go around, uh, driving like this. Oh, you joking? Man, this shit is unhealthy. Yeah, that's true. Always being in the truck and shit, it's not good for you. Yeah, I came out here, I was 160, 168. Uh, I was out here a few months, I was like 220. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, no, I couldn't fit none of my clothes. <laughs> yeah, you almost like double in size, bro. Like, that's a lot. You know what I mean? And that's because you're probably like living in the in the cab, not getting the proper exercise. You know? Yeah, that's the only thing I wanted to get this exercise uh, machine up in it's real small, but it, it it has a lot of resistance to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, that's a lot. It's a lot, but I guess it would be worth it because you can do a lot of things with it. But I was like, man, that's that's a lot. But uh, that's the only machine I know that's like that I can fit up and it can fit in the backpack. And it's like uh, it's like resistance, but the resistance goes to like 300 pounds. Oh, wow. It's a real good machine that you can bring everywhere with you. Mm-hmm. It's it, like you can fold it up, put it in a, a book sack, and go on about your way. I'm gonna uh, eventually I'm gonna get one, but not not right now because it's just too much. Well, probably about next month I have one, so uh, that's so nice, nice, nice. And then yeah, you can keep yourself active on the go. I have to start going to the gym more. I have a membership, but I I haven't been going like as much as I could be. I should be going like every. You know, yeah, I, had that member, I had a membership. I was using that. I was like, shit, they're taking sixty dollars a month. Uh, I'm about to use the machine like I live up in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like none of that. <laughs> none of that expense. Uh, I actually may be going down to St. Lucia soon because um St. Lucia. Yeah, someone I know passed away, and so I might go to the funeral, just like you know, show my support and stuff, because this is a guy I've known for quite a while, and you know what I mean. 
it's sad what happened. His um, his wife passed away from breast cancer. Yeah, and uh, be before she passed away, she lost uh, all mobility in her her body, her legs, so she couldn't walk. And then she was pregnant. She had a baby that she was having. And yeah, and so she ended up giving birth to the baby while she was still immobilized. And um, the baby lived for like a week and then it passed away. And then, um, yeah. And then like maybe less than a month or it's kind of, you know, um, Crazy. So, sorry, I got but I started talking and I lost track of what I was thinking because I just started thinking about her. She bet she passed away this morning. Or not yet the, the, the yesterday morning. Yeah, cancer. She had the baby, the baby lasted a week and passed away, and then she still has another Two older kids, and then she has a like a nine-year-old or five-year-old daughter. So how old is she? Like in her thirties, thirty-five, forty, maybe. Damn. Yeah, she wasn't that old. Nice person, you know, really um, kind-hearted. Bro, she was the one person that like opened up like my um, how do you say it? Like she opened up like a whole community with me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I met a lot of people in the CMOS industry because of her. And, like, her partner, husband, or whatever, his name is Smile. He's um, a Francis. And in and in St. Lucia, in in the this neighborhood, uh, Prale, or Pralin, or Prale, I forget how to pronounce it. But the Francis are, like, they're, like, a big name in CMOS. You know what I mean? And so he, what was it? It was almost like God arranged this moment for us to meet. Because it was like one day me and Asha were, I can't remember what we were doing. We were driving around somewhere. And we just kind of like said, ah, fuck it. Fuck the day. Fuck what we have to do. We're just going to go and drive around and check out CMOS Farms. Right? And just kind of like we did a lot of daydreaming that day, just like, oh, this, that. And so we went to this one CMOS farm and um, this area in Prale, and like it didn't seem like anybody was there, right? So we were there talking, checking shit out, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then um, maybe the next week, we're like at this like roadside like eatery place that we we're always eating at right because he knew the girl yeah. the that ran at glenda this place called glenda's and so glenda's dad is named mr smith right who also happens to be like an old time farmer guy mr smith has a daughter who's alana alana is you know partner like is married or partnered up with the guy smile so it was like we were sitting there chilling at this food eatery and the guy smile came up and started talking to us and he knew who we were because the girl alana had set, pointed him out and said i seen those guys on the beach with the sea moss and stuff do you know what i mean yeah. and so he came up and was like hey how you doing and we you know, we started talking, we became friends and stuff like that. And so through him, you know what I mean? I met like short man and like, bro, there's like people, you know, I'll show you one of the guys that are met. Like I'm talking, bro, like I know some guys that have been in like the CMOS industry forever. Yeah. Like this guy right here. Oh, hang on. Take that. Take that down. So this guy here in the screen, his name's Ainsley. Yeah. Right? They call him uh, Short Man. 
or black star, I think short man or something, because he's a small guy. This guy is my pal, bro. Like, you know what I mean? When he, every time he sees me, he hails me up, hey, what's up, bro? What's up, partner? Da, da, da. And will sit and talk to me, like, about CMOS for, like, ever. Talk about, like, the old days and CMOS and, you know what I mean? And so yeah. it's like, when you're in a community, and like this guy who's who's like a legend in CMOS comes up and it's like, yes, my boy, blah, blah. you know what I mean? And he's hailing you. It's like everybody says, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know? Who's this guy kind of thing? But you want to hear the joke, though? Do you know that they, they all think I'm white down there? all the time they all they all think i'm white and then so me and my partner we like we we have a legitimate partnership 50 50 partnership like he gets everything i mean they will refer to him as if he's my employee to his face so they're like oh hey hey where's your boss hey hey how's working for your boss and then then and he's like, my boss? And he's like, yeah, that white guy. And can't white guy. He's like, what the fuck? Oh, I mean, oh, they saw you before, right? Yeah. Oh, no, they all know me. They all know who I am. You know what I mean? I'm I'm the white guy from Canada in the CMOS. Like, I shit you not. That's, like, that's how I'm referred to. <clears throat> they know me as Julian the white guy, the white boy from Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It is what it is, you know. But so yeah, I think I might go back down there soon to ten. I'll see when this funeral happens. Although I feel like fuck, I don't know. It's like he um I don't even think he has the money for the funeral. Hey. Yeah man, bro, it's tough. And like these sea moss farmers, like, <clears throat> they've been taking it hard. Like, they haven't been making any money. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, the sea moss has been so cheap and not enough people are buying it, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm all for, like, the price going up, you know? Because to me, it's like, it's going to trickle down to. So, what's going to happen, in my view, is as long as it's done right. Is that if the price goes up, then people are going to care more about the sea moss and the quality, and the appearance is going to get better. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Which will help everybody on overall. Mm -hmm. But so. Yeah, that that definitely help. I don't know why I'm not right now. Huh? <laughs> I mean, I know where I'm at, but I, I don't know what part. Does the GPS tell you, ooh, like, how far you gotta go and stuff? Hey, I'm, a, I'm only uh, 30, uh, 33 miles away. Mm hmm. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what truck stop that I passed or okay, I see. I definitely don't want to go there. What? You don't want to go where? That truck stop. I don't like stopping at uh, certain truck stops. It's like in certain <laughs> places. Yeah. Uh, it's not a... Sketchy. <laughs> yeah, like so, some truck stop. I'm not stopping at. I'm like, yeah, it's something happening out here. Ain't nobody coming. Yeah. <laughs> And what do they call the girls? Lizard girls or whatever? Uh, lot, lot lizards and... Uh, lot lizards. <laughs> yeah, lot lizards. Oh, shit. My, my brother say lot lizards, uh, scallywags, itch bitches, and uh, what else he banshees? Banshees. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, banshees. Oh, shit. Mm. Mm. What a day. I know, I know. Night, night, Julian. So, yeah, you said, I think I'm going to call it a fucking a night just because it's like, 
It's bad. I have the worst habit of sleeping. Dude, I watched, I've been watching some old footage of stuff that I've recorded. So I have some live streams. <laughs> it's like so many of these live streams. I'm like. <laughs> And it's like at the time when I did it, I didn't realize I had fallen asleep. And I'm like, I don't know, like, oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find myself for like 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'll be back at you whenever you get on live again. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna oh, try and do it tomorrow. Okay, do you have any? You have any new herbs? Um. I know I have, um, I think, mango leaves or something. But, like, send me a new list of herbs that you want. Because what we're doing now, we've sourced out some land in St. Lucia. And we have someone growing our herbs for us. So you have the, uh, did you put the, uh, what is it, the bum one day? Did you put that on your website? The, the bum one day? No. Yeah. I got to get yeah, more of yeah. Bob Day. Um, you got to get some more. Mm -hmm. I ran out of it. Okay. And you you still going to do the, um, the cola nut? I have the cola nut. Um, you know what I got to do? I got to sit down and get some packaging. Maybe I'll do that this week. Because I have all these powders, cola nuts, herbs, and stuff. And I just don't have the right packaging to package them up and to resell them. And so I got to do that and then figure out what people are, are selling it for. And then I just got to throw it on the site. I should I should have all these products because we have access to it. You know, that cola nut stuff is good, too. You took it before? Yeah. I was making like a coffee out of it. Okay. Yeah, I might, uh, yeah, I definitely want some of that because I want some, uh, I want to make some stuff with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just, uh, yeah, I guess I'll holler back at y'all, um, you get back on. But I, I mm -hmm. definitely want the other herb to that bark. I definitely want some of that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 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 the Bob on day. <coughs> Yeah, you always mow them trees, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> the, mahog the mahogany wood. The hardwood, that's what it translates to. Bob one day yeah. is hardwood. So, and bro, it, it fucking it works good, man. Like works good. Yeah, I, I wanna uh, I wanna put in some rum or some vodka. Mm-hmm. Like a, you have to do it like a tincture or whatever. They have yeah. that down in St. Lucia a lot is um, the spice rum. Spice rum? Yeah. Oh, bro, it's killer. But it's got all the herbs and shit in it. And I remember when we were, okay. we were in St. Lucia, we stopped off the side of the road. My buddy knew the, the guy. was He was like a spice rum bar or whatever like on the side of the road he had all these jugs he must have had like maybe about yeah. 50. he had every single spice rum like he had cherry spice rum he had uh tamarind spice rum he had soursop spice rum he had like mango flavored spice rum he even had weed spice rum oh yeah it had all these weed plants in it and shit like that the big weed flower on it. I was like, holy fuck, this guy's got everything. You know? Mm -hmm. But all right. Man, I, I ain't going to keep you up. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get going. I got to get up early in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Well, I ain't going to go to shit. I got to get back five. All right. All right, it was good talking to you. And, uh, yeah. I'll probably try and come back on again next week or in a couple of days. Just see what happens. Yeah. All right. And with that, thank you everybody for watching. And uh, don't take, forget to take your CMOS. I'll see you later. I'm going to get some rest. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.
Chris Jones and friends. And with that, thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to take.